Hi guys, welcome to my December videos. This is Pisces Priestess, and for any of those that are new joining my channel, I want to thank you. And I also want to thank you guys for like, well, the last time I checked, there was 347 followers, and that is just so amazing to me. Um, now, I'm aware that that's a small number. Some tarot readers have, well, I guess YouTube readers, some YouTube pe people, <laughs> YouTubers, they have millions of followers, you know, but I'm in my corner of the world, I'm one person, this is my story, and I can't believe that there are over 300 people who watch my videos and care about my messages, and that, to me, is just the best thing. I never thought that this would take off so fast, so I want to thank each and every one of you for, for across. <laughs> for subscribing to my channel. It means so much to me. Your comments mean so much, guys. And here I am in December recording the videos for you now. And, you know, part of me can't believe it. Part of me is like, it's December, you know? So, and it is an intense month indeed. We are in Sagittarius season this month, and at the end of the month we will be entering in Capricorn season. Now, this month is all about... Well, the, I would say the first half of the month is all about communication, it's all about enlightening truth, um, it's all about our beliefs, it's all about our higher knowledge. Um, and I say this because we have a, a third house and a ninth house opposition. Every month we have, the moon has a chance to be full in light and it has a chance to be completely absent in light. So we call that a full moon and a new moon. The new moon is going to be happening in a few days on the 18th, and it's going to be a new moon in Sagittarius. Um, we had the full moon already, so if you're watching this, we experienced a full moon on the December 3rd. And um, you guys know me, I like to uh, cover the astrology in my intro videos, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some things that apply to the individual signs in the videos. So, the first thing that really happened in December was that full moon. That full moon completely changed my life. It was very enlightening. It was a very mutable moon. We always have a mutable moon before we have a cardinal moon. And that's very interesting. Um, I am a mutable sign. The mutable signs are Virgo, Pisces, Gemini, and Sagittarius. We're in a mutable season, okay? And it makes sense why mutable would come before cardinal because in order, mutable signs are all about change. It's all about adaptability. So a lot of people don't realize this, but whatever, whatever season we're in, it, it kind of flows with that kind of change. So this, when we reach a mutable sign, mutable signs represent the end. You know, we start out with Aries and then we go, that's a cardinal. And then we, we go to Taurus and that's fixed. And then we move to Gemini and that is mutable. And then that, there's three. And then we start again to Cancer, and that will be a cardinal. So we're reach, we've reached uh, Sagittarius season, and that means that our li it's like a cycle almost that's ending. Um, and, and it makes sense that it's mutable, because in order to create action, which is what a cardinal sign would be, and that would be Capricorn energy coming in, we had to initiate change. You can't, you can't, you can't apply action to something before changing, okay? You have to make the decision to change before you can you know, make action towards something. So that's how our universe works. And right now, it's a time for change. Everybody is changing in so many different ways. You thought that was just in Scorpio season, huh? But it's definitely kicking off here in Sagittarius season. Um, another thing is, you know, around this time of year, there's a lot of other changes happening as well. You know, we, we come up on the winter solstice. That is, and that's the shortest day of the year. Very, very powerful day of the year. That would be on the 21st. Some people consider it to be on the 22nd, um, but I would say the 21st is the winter solstice. Now, we're jumping a little bit ahead. We have a few things happening before that. Um, so we covered the full moon in Gemini, so that was completions, and that's happening in different areas of our life, you guys. I'll talk a little bit about that in the, the videos here. And then we had a Mercury retrograde on the same day as the Gemini full moon. I'm sure if you watch other readers, you know, they're, they're talking about this as well. Um, it's very interesting because Gemini is ruled by Mercury, so for Mercury to go retrograde on the same day as a Gemini full moon, very significant. We had that, it's been retrograde for a couple weeks now, week and a half, and it will go back direct on the 22nd, okay? Then, um, of course, I wanted to mention on the 18th, we have a Sagittarius stellium in the sky. 
Okay, that's very important in different areas of our life, guys. Very important to know where Sagittarius is for us. For example, for me, a Pisces, Sagittarius is my 10th house, okay? So that's all about career, it's all about long-term goals, things like that. So it's wise to know where Sagittarius falls in your chart and also in your personal chart. In my personal chart, Sagittarius falls in my 12th house, in my 11th house. So there's going to be a stellium there for me, and well, for us. And what a stellium is, is when three or more planets are, are coupled together in the sky. So on that day, okay, especially very, very important for Sagittarius, but very important for all of us because we're all under the same universe. We all connected to the same light. And, you know, this is going to be very, very important for us. All about our beliefs, all about higher knowledge, even travel, philosophy. So we're going to have the sun in Sagittarius on the 18th. We're going to have the moon. We're going to have Saturn. <clears throat> we're going to have Venus. And we're also going to have, what is that last planet? Mercury? It might be Mercury, but I know that there are five planets. It, it is Mercury. It is Mercury. Mercury is going to be in Sagittarius until... I know it moves into Capricorn, but it might not move into Capricorn this month. I'm not sure. So it will be Mercury, though. I don't have here that Mercury is moving right now. So there's going to be that powerful stellium in Sagittarius. I wanted to mention that to you guys. We had Chiron go direct in Pisces. Very, very important. Moving forward with pain. Whereas before we were dealing with a lot of past pain. So now this is the chance to heal ourselves in the moment. We went back into the past for a really long time to heal past wounds. Okay, That's the wounded healer, Chiron. We had Mars enter Scorpio on the 9th. We have a Saturn entering Capricorn. Okay, that is one of the most, I would say, one of the most important astrological aspects this month. Okay, we all have Capricorn in a different spot in our chart, you guys, but Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn is coming home, all right? I'm going to try my best to do Saturn videos. I think I'm going to schedule them in around, because I never do my videos before around the 15th. I always, I like, I like the month to to take its course for a couple months that way I can work with the energy I can feel what's already happened it comes out in my readings we could talk about what's happening now and then we can talk about what's gonna happen so a past present and future type of thing um, so uh, with that being said I'll probably wait and wait for Saturn to be in Capricorn for about a week and at the same time I have a cap rising so I believe I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, meditations and just initiations with with my ruling planet um, so yeah, I'll probably be able to get to those Saturn videos beginning of January, I want to say. Okay, so be on the lookout for, for my Saturn videos. I'm going to record uh, what I think Saturn uh, means in astrology and what I think Saturn will be doing. We're all going to have our karma shift. Saturn rules is the Lord of Karma. So, you know, instead of it being in the ninth house of Sagittarius, it's going to move into Capricorn, the 10th house, but it's a different house for all of us. So, after that, Saturn moves into Capricorn. I mean, it's like boom, boom, boom. 18th, we have a new moon. 19th, we have Saturn moving into Capricorn. 21st, we have a winter solstice. The sun moves into Capricorn, the, the 21st too. On the 25th, Venus moves into Capricorn. And, of course, for those of you who celebrate Christmas, that would be Christmas there. And then we have a happy numerology year. Um, I, myself, as an astrologer, I consider the new year to start on March 20th when the sun enters Aries. Yay! That would be a very, that's when the whole universe shifts uh, paradoxes, right? But numerology has a factor here. So instead of 2017, Universal Year One, and I should do a whole video on Universal Year One. Our universe has these 10 year cycles, right? And 2017 was, was a brand new cycle, it was a Universal Year One. And I'm not hearing a lot of astrologers talking about that. So I might do my best to put out a video soon about that as well, perhaps at the end of January when we're in a universal year two. So, you know, we are, we're officially initiating and we've ended the, the first half, the first chapter to a new cycle. And then we'll be entering chapter two, universal year two. Also, I do believe next month we have an Aquarius eclipse. I did put that down here at the bottom, but I believe I will talk about that a little bit more next month. And another thing I didn't put here is around the 19th, when Saturn moves into Capricorn, we're also going to be on the cusp of prophecy, okay? Very powerful cusp, and I believe it would end on the, the 25th when Venus enters Capricorn. 
So very powerful month. That was just a little bit of my basic notes. I don't want to make this intro video too long because my videos, guys, are pretty long this month. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the readings that, that what you can look forward to in my video. So this month I wanted to do a nine card spread because Sagittarius is the ninth sign. Um, I'm using, I guess I should have got these out before, but I'm using my Indigo Angel deck. I thought that was so beautiful. Sagittarius is such a light sign. You know, they are the mutable fire sign. Very, very light sign. Very, very light energy. So I'm going to be using my Indigo Angel deck um, to get the first nine cards. And then, of course, I'll be using the original Whiter Ray Tarot. Um, kind of as clarifiers, but as more so um, as an extension, just to get a better idea of what the the energies have been. Um, I've done a few readings. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, <laughs> my voice is a little cracky, but I've done a few readings already, and um, they are very powerful. Very, very powerful. They're a little bit longer because I'm mean, obviously there's nine cards, and then I put nine cards over that, so nine plus nine is eighteen. Eight plus one is nine. So I thought that was very beautiful to have some numerology playing play. I like to have a theme sometimes so I have this kind of 18 card spread this month guys it's a lot of cards but it, it's, it's what do you expect with this is kind of a what these readings are becoming is kind of an overlook of the whole year okay there's a lot of uh, energy coming up and it's because I'm a Pisces you know I represent the last house of the zodiac so 12 is a very powerful number for me you know I didn't even really realize that but we're in the 12th month Spirit works in 12s a lot, and it's because 1 plus 2 is 3, and, and, and Spirit works in trinities, so this is a very powerful month, Num numerology-wise. The 12th of this month, 12-12, was a very powerful day as well, so we're really, really coming up on the end of a cycle here, guys, and December is what is the sim symbols behind that. It's kind of symbolic for that, so that's what I'm doing for the readings, and also... I want to thank Capricorn and Sagittarius because I was I was looking, I wanted to start doing a, kind of some giveaways type of things, making my readings a little special. So I looked, uh, when I, I'm not sure how it is now, but I looked about a, a, the, the beginning of January, I, I looked at my videos, checked the feedback, and Capricorn had the most likes, Sagittarius had the most views. So I will be pulling an extra card for your guys' reading this month. And it's going to be from the Wisdom of the House of Knights. I figured, you know, that would be a nice, because uh, these cards here really cover some hidden energies. It's all about the night and what's hidden. And since there's so much light going on, you know, it might be nice to know what's behind the scenes. So Sagittarius, Capricorn, thank you so much for liking my videos and for, you know, viewing my videos. It kind of worked out because this is your guys' birthday month. So happy birthday. This is my present to you. And next month, we'll see who has the most views and who has the most likes, and I will do something fun with that. Also, guys, I am adding sage this month to my videos. I have incense, and I have sage. I think incense are a very, very powerful method of honoring the air element and honoring the fire element. Incense are air and fire, and that's exactly what we're dealing with this month, is Sagittarius, a fire sign, and air, Gemini. So I'm working with incense for everybody. That's for all the videos. Um, I didn't. I, I thought about maybe having that as my giveaway, like maybe some videos have an incense, but actually I'm just in need. These are very powerful energies these month, guys. I'm tapping into a lot of things behind the scenes, you know. I'm going to get some very powerful messages out here so that we could head into our new year, so we can head into 2018, I should say, with, with clear intent. There's been a lot that's happened this year. 2017 was an extremely enlightening year for me, and I hope it was for you guys too. Now, enlightening enlightening isn't always easy. It's, it can be very <clears throat> hard to wake up to the truth and to see things that you didn't see before. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat chakra. <laughs> but yeah, it, it can be very, very intense waking up to all these things, and I think... We've come a long way. I think it's been extremely transforming, and I'm actually very proud of all of us, especially those of us who have went inside, went inwards, and done the work needed. Those of those people, we're really going to be rewarded this month. We're really going to be rewarded next year, okay? So I do think that that's all, guys. Those are the readings I'm doing. I'm really excited to get the rest of them done. Very, very, very special, powerful messages. And other than that, you guys... We made it. It's the end of the year. I, I can't believe it. Um, 
but I hope you have the re rest of the, I don't know what time, when you guys are going to be watching this, but I hope you have the rest of the great, I always can't say that part. I hope you have, the. I hope the rest of your month is great, okay? This is what I mean. There's a lot of energies, it's, it's a lot to cover, but I'm going to do my best to just, you know, go with the flow, that's what's best for me, and, you know, maybe that would be what's best for you too, especially with all these energies going on here, okay? Um, I do hope you enjoy your readings this month, and I hope you enjoy your holiday and your new year. And other than that, I will talk to you guys next year. See you later. Sagittarius, hi. This is your December reading, guys. Now we have a little bit of astrology to talk about. Of course, how was your solar return, first of all? It's the 16th. We have a few more days of Sagittarius season. We have a few more days of Saturn in Sagittarius. Lot and lot and lot of important changes going on this month in December. First of all, it's the last month of the year of 2017, I should say. So, wow. Um, I have chills. And I don't know if that's just because I'm cold or what, but I'm going to go ahead and say it's because there's a lot going on with Sagittarius. And I have an incense burning as well, so divine blessings. I should have saged for your reading, but I saged at the beginning of when I sat down. I did Libra and Scorpio, and I'm going to do Sagittarius tonight because I think it's really important to get your guys' messages out. And also because it's so close to that new moon, right? It's so close to that new moon that we're experiencing in Sagittarius. So let's go ahead and talk, guys. This December is, you know, extra important for you because it's your birthdays. Some of you are experiencing birthdays. Um, some of you are born on the cusp of prophecy. So if you're born, I do believe that the cusp of prophecy has probably already begun. If you're born from like the 15th to the 21st, then you're born on a very powerful Sagittarius Capricorn cusp of prophecy. One of my best friends is born on the 21st. He's born on the winter solstice. So yeah, very intense. So we're going through, it looks like December is all about your first house and your seventh house. The first house and the seventh house are always opposite, even on the clock. Even if you look at if you look at a clock with numbers on it, then you'll see that one and seven are always opposite. Now in astrology, similar, we have an opposition between Aries and Libra. So you're going through an opposition between Sagittarius energy and Gemini energy. Sag is obviously your guys' first house. And then Gemini is your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. Now, the reason why you guys are going through a first house and a seventh house trans transitions this month is because the sun and the moon are going to be, you know, working in the first and the seventh house. On December 3rd, there was a full moon in your seventh house of Gemini. There was a Gemini full moon. Every full moon is opposite what the sun is. So the sun is in Sagittarius, right? That's why you guys have a solar return. So the moon is then going to be full in the opposite sign of Sagittarius, which is Gemini. So next month when it's Capricorn season, it's going to be Capricorn season this month in a few days. But in January, we're going to have a full moon in the opposite sign of Capricorn. Any of you guys know who that is? Cancer. So yeah, always an opposition. It's kind of how astrology works, okay? So beginning of the month, we started off with a full moon in your seventh house, okay? So full moons, as I've talked about before, symbolize new beginnings and completions, okay? Because the moon is full of light, and when the moon is full, it has an effect over our world. It has an effect over our energy. And it's a time where things come to completions. And a completion, an ending, is always one door closed, another door opens, right? So when something completes, another thing begins. So for you, Sagittarius, you could have been going through, come December, beginning of December, you could have been going through rather completions and new beginnings in relationships and this could have taken place inside your mind this could have taken place inside of you because the the moon symbolizes what we feel on the inside so i'm not saying all of you 
experienced a completion in a relationship, but there could have been breakups this month for some of you. If some of you applied to that, fine. There could have been new beginnings in relationships and also not just love relationships, but this is this is all relationships. We have a relationship with everything in the world, right? We have a relationship with our family. We have relationships with our bosses and our, our peers and our classmates, whatever it may be, our siblings, our friends. So just keep that in mind when I say completions and new beginnings in, in relationships. It's, it's completions and new beginnings in your seventh house of partnerships. So some of you could be partnering with certain people as well, or rather not partnering, partnering anymore with certain people. Now, the interesting thing about that full moon is that Mercury went retrograde mm -hmm, on the same day as that full moon. Interesting because Gemini is ruled by Mercury, so this was a very important energy I've never known. I'm sure it's happened before, but not in a while, not since I've become an astrologer. Um, very interesting for that Mercury retrograde. So while there was a full moon in your third, I'm sorry, in your first, in your, while there was a full moon in the seventh house, there was a Mercury retrograde that occurred in your sign. Okay, Mercury is in Sagittarius right now. So I am just gonna go ahead and say that you guys probably feel the Mercury retrograde the most. It's hard for me to say that because I fucking feel it. And John fucking feels it, Sarah fucking feels it, Timothy feels it, everybody feels it, okay? But when Mercury's in your sign, and when Mercury goes retrograde in your sign, it, it pretty, like, you're at, you're in the, the first of the line. So Mercury's, like, lining you up first to, to peg off, or, like, to, to, to bully, or, and I don't mean to say that, Mercury, like, I know you're cool, and there's all these positive things about Mercury retrograde, you know? It's when Mercury stops moving. And Mercury's ruled by Gemini and Virgo, and those two signs, I mean, especially Virgo, they never stop moving. Like, and you know, we can we can apply this to our own minds. You know, a lot of us are overthinking right now, you know, like we just don't stop thinking. So it's very, very cool for the, the planet that rules mental stability and communication to be going retrograde because it gives us a chance, you know, it doesn't feel that cool, you know, especially when things go wrong, communication, flat tires, uh, electronical errors, things like that. It doesn't really feel too great in that moment, but then looking back a few days later after these things go wrong, you realize, oh, you know, if that wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have went here and met this person or la la la. So there's always the light, right? There's always the light. So we had Mercury retrograde in your first house. So this has to do with yourself. The first house has to do with who you are and it has to do with, you know, things that you relate directly to you. So it's your mind. Your mind is what's going back into the past. That's what it's kind of like, a blast from the past. Excuse me, when Mercury goes back retrograde. It... But one thing I want to mention about this Mercury retrograde is it's not, it's not quite like any of the other retrogrades because... It's the last retrograde of 2017. So in my opinion, this Mercury retrograde has the capability to retrograde back any time throughout 2017. So we are reflecting on energies that have happened all year long. So we're going back into the past to mentally fix and clear out energies that have happened all year long. But don't worry, on the 22nd, it's going to go back direct and we'll be able to carry on with with this kind of temporary pause okay so just keep in mind that we have mercury retrograde in sagittarius i wasn't i haven't really been talking about that in my other videos but perhaps for capricorn aquarius and pisces i will mention that you know sagittarius expands everything you know you are a very expansive energy you you're ruled by jupiter so you expand jupiter is the biggest planet in the solar system so you expand things naturally Whereas Saturn restricts things, okay? Mercury, you know, thoughts can either, either expand or restrict. So it's interesting there that we have kind of some time travel. Sag, you're awesome for time travel. You guys, you know, you guys think differently about, like, everything. So when it comes to time, some of you don't believe in time. Some of you don't believe that all universes use time. So, and I'm just saying, it's things like that that Sagittarius thinks differently about. You guys are about higher knowledge, you know, you're the ninth house of philosophy, so you're like these philosophers, you know, about things. So I would, I'd love to talk to you guys about what some of this means to you, or what some of this means in your brain. 
Moving on though, we do have, ooh wee, very powerful. Okay, today's the 16th. I'm gonna try so hard to get these uploaded because it's messages like these that really need to, to get uploaded quickly, like tomorrow. Like I wish they were already uploaded, but Mercury, it, you know, it even affects me. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna trust divine timing and trust that these messages get out when they're supposed to. So we have a new moon in Sagittarius on the 18th. That's just a couple days away, you guys. By the time this is uploaded, it just keep in mind that it's on the 18th, okay? So on that day, there's a new moon in your sign. And for you, Sagittarius, this is happening the day before Saturn moves into Capricorn. So if I were you, I would really use the 18th as a time period to set new intention for the next four years. For the last four years, you have had Saturn in your sign on your first house. How interesting to have such a restricting, confining, authority, rule-setting planet in a sign that likes to have fun and expand everything and think about things on a higher level and fire and sag, you know, like, not cool. I mean, it's been fine, it, you know, whatever. But the point is, on the 19th, Capricorn is going to have Saturn in their sign. That means it'll be in your second house instead of your first house. So you need to prepare for that. We're gonna talk all next month. I'm gonna record Saturn videos in the beginning of January so that we can talk more personally. I don't wanna talk too much about this because we do wanna get into your very powerful reading. But yes, Sag, that new moon is gonna be a great time for you to set intentions for your future. It's gonna feel, I, I don't know, it might feel powerful for some of you. I know some of you had pretty, frustrating or you know intense birthdays you know it i told you solar returns are very very powerful the sun is returning to where it was when you were born so you know very very powerful stuff there it's like being born again you know what i mean but the new moon is also like being born again it symbolizes the womb so in during new moons it's like we're all inside the womb again and when we're in the womb you know we're not born yet so it's like we have like a lot of time to think about what we're going to do when we're two years old or and I, it doesn't happen just like that but you know you can use this energy metaphorically so the sun and the moon are going to be coupled together in Sagittarius and this is a great time to think about our future and it's going to manifest between the time of the cancer full moon so we have the Sagittarius new moon and then the next moon is going to be a full moon in uh cancer so you're going to see a lot of things come to fruition in between those time periods. So from about the 18th to the first week of January, you could be thinking about what you want to see change, especially with this with this big, big, bad Saturn getting out of your guys' sign. Like everyone everywhere, well, every astrologer, every enlightened person is really, really uh, feeling that shift. This is, you know, Saturn is the Lord of Karma, so all of our karma is going to shift. But we want we have that new moon in your first house, so it's very important for you. Um, and we also have a Sagittarius stellium that day. So a stellium is when there's three or more planets in the same area. So we're going to have the sun in your sign in your first house. We're going to have the moon in your first house. We're going to have Mercury in your first house, Venus in your first house, and Saturn is still going to be there. And this is a very important day. It's like... I don't know if Saturn's going to let up on you guys or if he's going to, he, you know, it depends. It depends. I, I think some of you he's going to let up on, like, good job, sport. Good job, sport. You know, good job. You know, maybe. But then others of you, he might be like, he might take the last little bit of time. You know, Saturn is that military dad that he, he doesn't show any mercy sometimes. Karma. Karma doesn't show any mercy, right? If karma had emotions, there'd be people walking around who don't get what they deserve. So it's about getting what you deserve, Sagittarius, and that's going to be different for all of you. Some of you deserve good, some of you deserve otherwise. And it's all about what you've done the last four years, and it's all about what you've done this last year with Saturn in your sign. But nonetheless, let's, let's thank the universe for it. I'm ready to have my Sagittarius friends back, you know? There's, it's like I haven't really been able to talk to my Sagittarius friends. I don't know if it's because of Saturn or Mercury retrograde, but it's like I feel like you guys have been out of reach, you know, and I'm not the only person who feels that way. You know, a lot of astrologers feel like Sagittarius hasn't really been their fun, bubbly selves for the past few years, and that's just not okay. Like, I, we need your guys' energy. We need this, and you're a mutable sign, like Pisces, you know? So we need that mutable fire, that mutable passion, 
that mutable magic to come back. And I think, you know, after you guys get this seriousness of Saturn out of the way, you know, if uh, you guys might come out pretty slowly, like, is it really over? Can I really do what I want now without getting direct karma for it? You know, I don't know. But yeah, you want to use that Sagittarius stellium. You're going to have Mercury to work with. You're going to have Venus. You're going to have Saturn. That would be a beautiful time to really manifest. Like, you want to speak to Saturn. That's what I would do as a Sagittarius. I would speak to Saturn. It's going to be your last opportunity to work with Saturn on the 18th. Because come the 19th, he's going to move into Capricorn, baby. And, um... We're going to have the winter solstice on the 21st, and then the sun moves into Capricorn. So the sun's going to leave you guys alone, Saturn's going to leave you guys alone, and you're going to have your freedom back, okay? So that is the astrology for this month. And of course, we have the tarot part of your reading now. So I'm going to be, this is a really important reading, it's pretty long too. So I'm going to be using a different angle. So I'm going to slide you over here just so you can see your reading. So yeah, Sag, that's a lot, huh? But don't worry, it's last month of the year, and I do believe that we have some, some pretty positive things to look forward to. But let's take a peek here at how the month of December is going to affect Sagittarius. Interesting. Okay, right away we have expression coming out. That's a very beautiful card to come out for a fire sign because fire signs are all about expression, right? So this is for Sagittarius for the month of December. And I love that your guys' energy just like totally showed me that message. Like, thank you for having your cards come out rather easily. That was really cool. All right, so that was a lot of messages there. Just trust me. Just trust me. I'll get your reading out. So this is for Sagittarius for the month of December 2017. Angels, please hear. Please hear us. Thank you. You did immediately, but perhaps I need to have more patience. And so do you, Sag, because this is a part of your reading here. So expression and patience are your first two cards out. Interesting. I know Sagittarius. Oh, interesting. We have trust. And I don't do reverse cards, but I play the cards as they lie, and we have trust in reverse. I don't even know how that card is reversed, but everything happens for a reason, right? Wow. We have make a wish and acceptance. Acceptance is coming out right in the middle of your guys' reading, so very, very powerful there. So this is for Sagittarius angels. We're asking for guidance. What can we talk to Sagittarius about for the month of December 2017? What can we expect for the, the middle of the month and the ending of the month? Let's get Sagittarius a, a powerful message here. My heart goes out to you guys. Not in a sympathetic way or anything. I know you guys don't need my sympathy, but I don't know. I just I love you a lot. Physical outlet. Of course, I would need a fucking physical outlet too if Saturn had been in my sign for the past four years. Some of you need to like, you know those little things that hang up in people's basements and they just go punch them? Yeah, what is that, a punching bag? It's like you guys have been Saturn's punching bag. I'm sorry, Saturn. I I'm a Saturn-ruled person. I have a Capricorn rising. So I'm very much ruled by Saturn. And I don't like to diss my planet ruler, but... And I have Saturn right on top of my sun as well. That's something very unique that happens in astrology for some people. Like, kid you not, my sun is 14 degrees Pisces and Saturn is 14 degrees Pisces in my chart. So I was born with Saturn directly on top of me. So I actually understand what you guys have maybe been going through. It's like the restriction of awareness. It's the restriction of... Although I don't feel like a person who's who's restricted in awareness, but it's like it restricts me personally. So I think Saturn has been restricting you personally. And Sagittarius doesn't take kindly to energies that restrict them. So <laughs> Saturn better watch out. 
I just want you guys to be able to see everything. So we have time to create. We have shielding. Um, I think Scorpio or Libra. Libra? I think Libra got the same card in the same exact position. So some of us are really going through similar similar uh, obstacles and energies in December, which isn't a, a huge surprise. So let's get let's get one more card for Sagittarius, but Spirit, it's really important, this card. It's to symbolize how the month's going to end, because this is your last card right here. So let's get the last card for Sagittarius is December. So what can we expect the month to end like? Your spirit to best symbolize the end of December for Sagittarius 2017, please. Wow, you guys are oh, never mind. <laughs> you already know that's why it took so long to come out because you guys literally already know. So, very interesting to end your reading with that. And then, all right, bottom of the deck is no doubt, relax and release. So there's an underlying energy of relax and release in your reading because there's a lot that you need to relax about and there's a lot that you need to release. So we'll be talking about this at the end of your reading and we're going to compare it to all the cards here that we have, right? Don't don't forget, Sagittarius, that you guys had the most likes and, and views on my video, so I'm going to also be getting you a... Wisdom of the House of Night card, but that's a little bit towards the end, okay? But I just didn't want you to forget that. What we're going to do now is get some clarifiers, because this is an 18-card spread. So we're going to lay nine cards on top of the cards we already have and talk about them together. Okay, we have a message coming out. It's not necessarily for your reading, but someone needs to hear it. We have the High Priestess at one end. So I do see that some of you are really, really spiritual at this time. But we have the Ten of Swords and the King, the Queen of Pentacles. So, some, someone, some Sagittarius out there, not only are you going through a completion of pain, um, I mean, come on now, this is the equivalent of Saturn being in, in your sign. I don't mean to keep, like, dogging on Saturn. There's a lot of, like, positive, positivity with Saturn. You know, he adds structure to our life. He adds rules and regulations. He adds boundaries. So as a Pisces, I love Saturn. My Capricorn rising really does help me ground and and bound and give boundaries. You know, I don't really I let people do anything like ooh water, come on in. But my Saturn, my Capricorn's like, hey, do you want to feel like this? You know, so there are positivities with Saturn as well. Um, but yeah, I see this as, as, you know, this is kind of, I don't want to say defeat, but this is a lot of pain. This is the Ten of Swords. So this is pain and, you know, it's, it's a certain death to a situation as well. But, you know, you have to be able to see the light and the dark in this card because we do see a lot of darkness there, but we see a little bit of light. You see how the, the, the sky is not completely dark. It's not completely so over the mountains there is light again but nonetheless i see a person here who's on the ground in a great a great deal of pain he's been stabbed she's been stabbed a, a number of times no person should be stabbed this much okay this is a lot of pain so i'm hearing there's someone watching my video whose energy reached out to me and I just want you to know that I do see your pain, whether this is Saturn caused or if this is a the solar return that you guys experienced or whether this is just your whole December, uh, whole 2017 or your whole December. You know, I do I do want you to know that I acknowledge your pain. I feel it. I feel it in my own back that your spine has became swords like, you know, this is backstabbing. This is, you know, defeat in a certain way. But also, any any 10 card talks about completion. So the pain is over, Sagittarius. And I don't want you to think you'll never experience pain again, but not in this way. So I do see some of you rising from this. And I'm happy to see the 10 of swords. It's not like the 9 of swords or the 8 of swords, you know, 
it's the Ten of Swords and it's a completion. So I love the Ten of Swords in a way that I know that the worst is over. And I do believe this is your solar returns and this is, you know, your birthday is coming and, and you, you got, that's a lot of pressure. And this is Saturn leaving your sign finally, okay? So this is coming out with the Queen of Pentacles. For some of you, this could be an Earth sign, you know, and I don't want to say that it's just the men because it's a queen. This is, this is different for all of you, but this is coming out with the Queen of Pentacles. So for some of you, this is a financial pain ending. For some of you, this is pain with a Taurus Virgo or Capricorn ending. For some of you, this is the, the ending of not feeling grounded. This is the ending of not feeling financially stable or not feeling like you value yourself enough. And another thing about pinnacles is that pinnacles are seeable and touchable and feelable. It, you know, whereas if this was a, a cup, it would only be feelable emotionally. But pinnacles are real. Pinnacles, I just got a weird sensation in my hand. So this might sting a little bit. I don't know why. I, don't, I literally felt like a sting in my hand. And, you know, I'm not usually someone who feels a bunch of weird stuff during readings but for some reason i literally did just feel it hurt it hurt <laughs> i'm not gonna lie it kind of freaked me out it felt like there was a bug on me that bit me but it literally there's nothing there so i don't know what that was about but what i was saying is that you know well let me just see here oh okay seeable feelable pinnacle so this is going to be pain and this is going to be a completion for some of you, this is letting me know that this pain, because this is mental energy. When we see swords, it's usually mental because it's it's air. And air is all about thought and communication. So for some of you, this is like an ending with communication. Or you might communicate your pain this month. Like you might have literally reached the end of, of something and you're just like, look, let me tell you what I've been through. Okay, you might be commu communicating that you feel this way. And that's good. Because when you communicate it, it's going to kind of end it. It's going to like voice it you know what i mean so that's coming out for some of you but really this is showing me that this this is not inside your mind like some of you actually went through real life pain it felt very real it felt as real as the queen of pentacles does you know because she's all about what's real and what's grounded so some of you are really coming up on a on an ending to this okay and this this is a capricornish energy so for some of you, I'm seeing that it's a completion around Capricorn season, okay? So in, in days, in a few days, you know, you may feel this kind of, but it's better than nine swords. Like, I don't know about you, but if I knew that I was going to get stabbed ten times, I know it might seem a little silly, but I would rather it happen ten times in a row than one time this week and two times next week. Like, I'm just a get her done type of girl. So if you're going to hurt me, hurt me and get it over with. But I just want you to know that that message came out for some of you, and it's going to be different for, for all of you. And you do want to release that pain, right? You want to release and relax after that's been done to you, Sag. All right, spirit. Okay, angels. Whoa, look what card popped out next. Interesting. King of Pentacles. So, mmm. That's interesting, Sagittarius. So some of you killed off the feminine side of you. And you're expressing a way more uh, masculine side of yourself. Because this came out with expression. And the Queen of Swords is... I didn't really see you guys killing off the... the but now I see it. Now I see that. I see that some of you have really, the feminine parts of you that, you know, come on now. We, Saturn is in your, has been in your sign for four years. And I do know that Saturn can really, really toughen up your skin. Whereas the feminine side of you may be empathic and kind and patient. You know what I mean? It's interesting I say patient because that's the next card that you have. Um, but you're way more grounded now, Sagittarius. Wow. You're way more masculine and grounded. Like, you know what's up from down now. Saturn taught you. I got chills right now. Saturn taught you guys a lot. Makes me, like, want to prepare for Saturn to come into Pisces 
in, a, in years down the road. Like Saturn is something that you can never over prepare for. So that'll be my Saturn return. Wow. Killed off the Queen of Pentacles and, and, is, and you're the King of Pentacles now. Especially of your money, but we'll we'll ex we'll explain what this means when we get when we get reading get reading your 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 cards. Well, huh? Some of you have a decision to make. We have the Two of Swords in the middle of the Ten of Wands and the Seven of Swords. So some of you have a rather difficult decision to make. Could be between an Air sign and a Fire sign could be between interesting that both of these cards have it's like your hands are full you see you're 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 thinking a lot and you're very passionate about these thoughts but you're you are overburdened with a rather sneaky energy and it's interesting because Saturn is in your sign so for some of you it's like this is it could go either way some of you've been working really hard this is a work really hard uh, card it's also a burden card. There's a lot there, right? That's a heavy weight. But for for most of you, I feel that this is, you are a fire sign. And fire is symbolized by wands. This is ten of wands. So this is, you, this is a compa this is a passionate completion. We had the ten of swords and now we have the ten of wands. So, you know, this is you carrying your passion into the new year. But you have a decision to make. Are you going to keep working this hard when Saturn leaves your sign? Or are you going to, you know, now that you can get away with things, either you can continue to be a hard worker or you can say, hell yeah, now karma isn't in my, now I can do these kind of things. And this is someone who's literally stealing from an army base. But you want to be careful because there's always someone in the background. You see where my finger is there? There's an there's other soldiers over there who see exactly what this guy's doing. He thinks that he's doing something without being watched. He thinks that he's getting away. Ha ha ha. I stole all these swords from an army base. I can't wait to go back and tell my friends. Oh my god, I'm such a badass. I stole this. I stole these swords. Yeah, but you're going to get gunned down. And I'm not saying that this is either someone in your life, Sagittarius, or you. I feel that this is a decision that you have to make after Saturn leaves your sign because we have the two of swords right in, in the middle. So it's like you have a decision. Either you're going to be your fiery self, either you're going to ca keep carrying the passion in your heart, or you know, you're going to try to press your luck. Or, or I do see that this is a decision between a burden or making out like a bandit you know interesting there but you want to be careful because remember i was talking about how this guy thinks that no one can see him well this, look at how bright this card is it's he's doing this in broad daylight and the reason i say that is because the bottom of the deck right now is the sun so it's your decision sagittarius but your hard work the sun has everything to do with awareness the sun is what so what applies light and this is also a Leo energy, because Leo is ruled by the sun. But I only see that for a couple of you. Your hard work is seen by the universe. And behaviors like this are also seen by the universe, whether Saturn's in your sign or not. So you have a decision to make between the Seven of Swords and between the Ten of Wands. But either way, the sun is going to shine, which is abundance and happiness, but it's also being seen every move you make is seen okay we have judgment coming out really 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 uh intense really intense sagittarius you you need to have your this is coming out with patience so wow now this is something really special spirit we have trust but it's in the reverse so what is it that sagittarius isn't trusting in the beginning of december why is trust reversed show me more about why trust is reversed in Sagittarius is reading. Why is trust reversed? What is Sagittarius not having trust in? What what should Sagittarius? Whoa, gosh darn. Um. Well, here's a message. That I don't know if you guys got angry at me or if something's angry at you, but. I just want to take the time to set intentions that only positive energies and calm 
light energies are present because I felt a little angry. Okay, so there's some there's some type of aggression there. I don't know if you guys caught that on camera, but my cards just flew out. Nonetheless, though, we do have another three card trio here. We have the Knight of Cups, which is a Pisces Cancer Scorpio, but just bump that. It doesn't have to be a Pisces Cancer Scorpio, but it is a new love offer coming in. Um, it's a new beginning. Okay, every knight is bringing forth something, whether it's the Knight of Pentacles or the Knight of Swords. It's charging forward with a new beginning. Okay, so this is the Pisces card. Some of you um, may have something to do with the Pisces. And it's interesting, we had the Two of Swords in the middle of your reading before, and we had the Seven of Swords, but now we have the Five of Swords, and they're kind of similar energies, see? I, I always think about the Five and the Seven of Swords together, but this is a victory for one person and defeat for another. The people in the back have been defeated. They're unarmed. This guy has so many swords, like he has enough swords to last him. He has five of them. And he's, you know, he he defeated these other people. But, I, you know, it was a Sagittarius that made me see this card differently. Interesting in love. Her name's Joey Soul. And she is a reader on YouTube if you feel like watching her. She's really, really awesome. I think she's really awesome. She's I can tell that she's very unique and different. And I don't know many Sagittariuses. So I found her on YouTube and I just love her readings. Um, I hope she sees this. Maybe I'll message her and say, hey, you know, you came up in my reading. Because she mentioned that the Five of Swords isn't really a defeat card. It's it's kind of a victorious card. It just depends on what you look at. You know, in, in, in the back there, yeah, they're pretty defeated. But the guy with the yellow hair, he's pretty fucking victorious. He's got all the swords he needs. Um, for some of you, this can be an argument or lack of clarity. Because I do see a lot of clouds in the background. And it does seem a little bit rough. And I did feel a negative energy when those cards flew out. And it might be because of some type of five of swords. You might feel like, well, fuck. Why do people keep taking from me? People who have enough keep taking from me. This guy has three swords already. And he just took me and my buddy's sword. Like, fuck it. You can have it, dude. Why do you keep... You don't need any more. So that can kind of be the feeling of an argument there. Like, what more do you want me to do for you, dude? Okay, so there could be some type of lack of clarity or something. But it's interesting that you had the Two of Swords in your last reading, or the last three cards that popped out, and now you have the Two of Wands. So this is another decision. Anytime you see two, because there's the Two of Cups as well, and people don't see that a lot, but that could be a decision between two lovers. But this is a passionate decision that you have to make, Sagittarius. You know, I knew that there would be some pretty interesting messages that came out for you because it's your month. It's your birthdays, it's Saturn's in your sign, like, it's your season right now. So, you have a rather passionate decision to make, but nonetheless, you have the world in your hands. So, you really want to make the decision of, you know, with the Two of Wands, it talks about, do you want to do what you've always done because it's comfortable, or do you want to expand your horizons and do something a little bit different and take a risk? So you have a choice between some type of new offer of emotion and the same old, same old that you've been experiencing all year long for the last four years. This is the last four years for you. The lack of clarity, the take, take, take. That big guy that took your sword, it could be that could be Saturn. Think of that guy with the yellow hair as Saturn. And think of behind those people, you are one of those people behind him. And, and this is communication, right? This is happening in your mind, which is why I'm seeing mental clarity. In your mind, people have just been taking from you. And it's like, it's like a lose-lose situation. And the person who wins is an asshole, okay? That's how I see this card. And, you know, you feel like you have nothing to defend yourself, especially in a certain conversation with someone. So you can either choose that energy because that's what you've experienced with Saturn in your sign for the past four years. And that's what your 2017 has looked like. Or you can choose what you're looking at. You see how this, you see how this, this guy is offering the world to this cup so it's a world of emotion i'm seeing he's he's facing this king of cups or this i'm sorry this knight of cups and he's turned his back you turned your back here too look you're not you're not looking at this energy now that can be a good or bad thing but i see you here by this river back here so it's like fuck it i can't have mental clarity but i will have emotional clarity 
If I can't have mental clarity, I will take emotional clarity. You're not going to make me confused altogether. Choose one. So I see you here. You've turned your back on a negative energy to, to, to pay attention to your emotional needs. And I see you doing that here as well. You've taken what you have, this world of yours, right? This is your world. You hold the world in your hands. And you've turned your attention to a more emotional, sensitive, kind energy. See these fish? Very kind, very humble, offering you this emotional cup. And you're offering them the world. So this, this is interesting. This can be a person or a situation. But it's a lot more emotionally understanding than this energy. So you have to choose Sagittarius. There were, there were two sets of threes that came out for you. So you have a two of swords decision to make, a mental decision. And you also have a passionate decision to make as well. So you have to choose between the Knight of Cups and the Five of Swords. And you also have to choose between the Seven of Swords and the Ten of Wands. And at the bottom of the deck, we have the Two of Pentacles. So this is all about balance now. You know what I mean? And you really do need to balance out those emotions that you felt all year long. And that you felt all, all past four years. So... Mm. All right, we have this Ten of Wands popping out again. And this time we have it popping out with the Four of Pentacles. So some of you are really hanging on tight to something that may be weighing you down. The Four of Pentacles talks all about holding on tightly to things. You see how tightly he's hanging on to these Pentacles? One's on his head, he's got his feet. Like he's really focusing a lot. And this is not a bad thing. If you're focusing on your finances, fine, you know, fine. But you don't want to come become too consumed in your finances that you forget the passion in life. You know, I just, I see a really heavy load here, Sagittarius. Okay, this is the, four, you're holding, and look how tight you're holding on to these wands. Like, come on now, do you have any more, you don't have any hands left. So you're literally using your head as, as balance now. Which, A, that could be metaphorical. You want to use your head. Use your head. You know, you, mental clarity is a thing right now, but gosh darn, this Ten of Wands keeps coming out for you. Let go of that burden. You don't have to do all the work. This could be how busy you've been since Saturn's been in your sign or since, you know, all of December, all of 2017 and all month long. You could have been, you know, you, you, I know Sagittarius is pretty busy and you can be busy making money. I do see that here, that you're busy making money. And that's fine, Sagittarius. But for those of you that, that this means burden and attachment, not only burden, but attachment to that burden. Not cool. And I really, <laughs> you really need to release that, remember? Release and relax. This isn't somebody who's releasing or relaxing. This person needs to release. This person needs to relax. So it's interesting that release and relax is coming up for you at the bottom of the deck so i believe that that's just in it that is spirit showing me that sagittarius really is burdened it's been very burdening see that those 10 look at all those wands this is everything that you've had to, to bear everything that you've had to to hold on to this is such a heavy weight and i don't even know it, it might you might have been dealing with this energy for so long that it's gonna literally shock you when Saturn leaves your sign in a couple days and you feel, it's almost like zero gravity, I feel like. Like, if after feeling heavy for so long, feeling light is, is actually foreign. But you need to let the, you want to let this go, Sagittarius. Let go of those burdens. Don't hold on tight to anything that might be hurting you. Bottom of the deck is the Two of Cups. Last time, it was the Two of Pentacles. So there could be some type of union or twin flame that is really burdening you. And it could be an earth sign because I see that it's pinnacles. Could be Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I don't know, guys. And it feels like this is coming up for trust. But I need a single card, Spirit. I need a single card for, for this trust reversed. So that I can get a better idea of what Sagittarius is going through, please. Interesting. We have the strength card. And it's also interesting that just by chance, we have the strength card at, at, in this deck as well. And I just looked at it a, a few minutes ago. So that, that's interesting. Now, 
we have make a wish next so let's see here what what this wish is about in the middle of december for sagittarius make be making make sure you make wishes guys we have a, a flying card here Ooh, ace of cups baby some of you are wishing for new love after letting go of jerks and assholes and bitches and hoes so cool 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 some of you are making a wish for emotional stability or emotional fulfillment but i think most of you are wishing for love because sagittarius loves love and they're just sexy so what is it that sagittarius should accept because we have acceptance right in the middle of their reading so what is it that sagittarius needs to accept about life and accept about 2017 and accept about to about december and accept in life you know what i mean like as a whole so what can we put with acceptance spirit? Okay. Ooh. Seven of, I mean, six of swords. I always say that that's the seven of swords. When we already dealt with the seven of swords, right? That's the decision that you have to make. And I see that some of you, high priestess, the high priestess, the high priestess, spiritual shit. Okay, we had, a, we had a card come out. I think it's the three of pentacles. And it is. Time to create a work situation or a teamwork situation. Especially after doing everything yourself, Sagittarius. It would be really cool to link up with a few people who can carry their own weight. And maybe you can start some type of project or contract with them or some type of work. We have the eight of pentacles. So we have leaving and leaving. We have the six of swords and the eight of cups. So not only are you leaving mentally, but you're also leaving emotionally. I wouldn't expect anything else, Sagittarius. I don't want you to go, but you can go, okay? As a Pisces, just just know I don't care if you leave for a little while and if you disappear for a little while because I understand that you may need a little bit of time after Saturn leaves your sign, okay? And I'm not going to tell anybody if you don't tell anybody, but... Just know I'm going to miss you a lot and that I'm going to cry when you go. But I'll be here when you come back, if you ever do come back. So, let's get get a last card. And it's for you already know. So what is it that Sag already knows? I know they're really magical. Because it looks like you already know a lot. The High Priestess is like all-knowing, okay? So, alright, here we go. Oh, um, all right. The Nine of Swords. You already know what's causing you mentally anxiety. And then at the bottom of the deck, you have the Five of Pentacles. So, Sag, you know, my readings are very truthful. I'm a very, I don't want to say I'm a talented tarot reader, but I am a Pisces. And when I tap into these energies, I do it with my entire being, which is positive when it comes to the messages that come out. Let's get a, ooh, okay. I just wanted to open the deck to 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 get a better look at why you're feeling left out in the cold and and we have the devil here so some of you are feeling left out in the cold by a karmic situation some of you are being directly left out in the cold by a capricorn um this is saturn saturn is ruled by capricorn and i feel like a lot of you feel like these people down here that are chained but the thing about the devil card is that they can leave anytime they want you know those chains are a lot bigger than their necks so they can lift those chains this is a subconscious energy so don't be too afraid sagittarius this isn't the actual devil i need to do a video about the devil and i'm gonna do it in capricorn season i've been waiting to come out about what I think about the devil because I have a very interesting perspective about the devil okay it's not what people think but we do have this tarot you know we always want to see the good and the bad right well this is coming up some of you are feeling left out in the cold because of karma some of you are feeling so I'm gonna actually leave this so that I know to relate this to the devil I'm gonna leave it guys so that we can talk about this at the end of your reading because I think that we need to this is a rather dark energy this is a very cold energy and we need to talk about these chains, okay? So we're going to leave the devil here because he comes out when we need to talk about karma and when we need to talk about the subconscious. And I'm a Pisces, so I like to talk about the subconscious. And remember, we have release and relax here. So you may need to release that left out in the cold feeling and relax your subconscious. Don't worry. I'm going to explain it in a way that you get it, okay? Pisces, Pisces is here. I love you guys. Love you, love you. 
And don't worry, we're going to get a card, a very honest card from the dark. Okay, the dark is always going to be very honest with you, and we're going to get a card for you, okay? And this could also be Capricorn season. You got to think of this as a Capricorn card, okay? It took me a while to see that card in a positive way, but I've reached that point. I mean, I, I do feel certain vibes with it sometimes, like that it's good. and it, it depends on the person if it's good or bad, but we'll, we'll get to that, Sag. Let's, let's start at the beginning, okay? Let's start in, in what, what this could be the beginning of December, okay? And we have expression. This does not have to be the, the beginning of December. It can be the middle. It can be the end. But we do have expression coming up here. And as I mentioned before, you're a fire sign. And fire signs, it's very, very important for them to express their, their feelings. And it's important for them to express their passion. It's ex important for them to express the way that they feel. And it's interesting because this is a rather shy girl. She, this is being shown. She's really shy. She's kind of timid. She has an umbrella to kind of hide her wings, you know? She's pretty, she's kind of shy, but she's brave enough now to kind of express a little bit of her feelings after coming out of a long period of time of being restricted. Hello, Saturn. This this person, this girl has been restricted too, you know? So soon she won't even need that umbrella. She'll just spread her wings and fly relentlessly. So I see in the beginning of December, or rather at some point in December, because this is going to be different for all of you, but it, it is coming up here as number one. Like, this is the first card that came out for you, and it flipped over. It was very beautiful how this came out. So it's like, you want to make sure you're expressing yourself, okay? This is what we've been missing. This is what we've been missing from you, Sagittarius, you know? I feel like Saturn and your sign, you know, it didn't really allow you to express yourself as much as you wanted to. So in December, those feelings of expression are going to come back. And instead of hiding yourself under an umbrella, like it, like preparing for rain, it's like you've been preparing for the chance of rain metaphorically for four years. Because Saturn will rain on a hoe. It'll rain on a bitch. And not in a positive way either, but it will rain down on you and you'll just be in a dark, stormy place. And it's interesting that the rain in your reading is actually really positive. Okay, so we'll get to that soon. But it's not raining above you anymore. This rain is not going to rain down on your head. It's going to rain down from you as a beautiful flowing fountain, okay? The, all the tears that you've cried, all the pain that you've endured, it, it's going to be healed by this Ace of Cups, okay? I can't wait to talk more about that part of your reading. But we're going to talk about expression for a little bit longer. You know, you, you really are preparing for what we'll call um, harsh weather conditions, if you know what I mean. Saturn is pretty unpredictable. It makes us feel very restricted and shy. It makes us feel like we don't have a voice. So it's very important for you to express yourself, Sagittarius. Nothing lasts forever. So this, it's all been a, it's all a phase, okay? It was all to teach you something. So it's very important that in December, you're coming from a place of expression, whether you're expressing anger whether you're expressing love or fear or happiness or anxiety, any of these things. You want to make sure that you're expressing it because when you express, this is the magic of fire signs. The secret is, is that fire signs actually release and heal through expression. So if you know a fire sign that isn't expressing themselves, they are deeply depressed. There is no reason... I'm not saying there's no reason, because some of us really do become really depressed, but fire signs, it, it concerns me. It genuinely concerns me when, when a fire sign isn't expressing their self. There's so many different ways to express yourself. Now, if an earth sign isn't expressing yourself, that's easy. That's fine. Y'all earth signs, you know, y'all grounded. Y'all express yourself through money. But fire signs, Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, it's important that you are expressing the way that you feel, because if you don't, it can get really dark. And I think that that's what's been going on with Saturn. Saturn doesn't care about if you express yourself or not. But, you know, in December, your higher self knows that it's coming up on a time where you're going to be free and these chains are going to be broken from you. So, you know, it's time to come back out and be that fiery self. Like, I just feel, I just wish I could talk to each and every one of you on a personal level and, and feel free to message me i have in my description box i have my social media and my email if you guys need to talk to me i am a loner like i stay at home 
I, I this is what I do. I work spiritually. I'm blessed enough to have the, have my own office and to have my own space where I can talk to you. This is what I'm I was born for. So if you need to talk to me, if you need to express yourself to someone, come hit me up. Hit up this Pisces because I get Jupiter, okay? I understand Saturn. I understand Jupiter. I understand Neptune. I understand all that, okay? So please hit me up if you need to. So we have the King of Pentacles coming out with expression. Now, for some of you, this is the need to express yourself to an earth sign or to express yourself in the way that an earth sign would. Now, that's rather twisted advice because earth signs, no offense if any of you are watching, not quite the best with expression. They're not quite the best with feelings at all. They try to pretend like they don't have feelings. They just care more about what's grounded and what's logical. So, you know, some of you could even be turning into that kind of a figure, having been through everything that you've went through. But this is expressing yourself in a really grounded way as well, right? There's a reason why this King of Pentacles came out. There's a reason why you have killed off that Queen of Pentacles. Some of you literally did kill the feminine grounded side of yourself. And you're now this more masculine character but you are there is some hesitation here with with the expression card she's rather shy okay now other than expressing yourself in a grounded way and expressing yourself pretty stern like a earth sign this could also be the expression of finances this could be the expression of newfound value you know i don't have a sagittarius in my life not really not directly but if I were dating a Sagittarius or if I were if I had a brother or sister I guess my my sister does have a Sagittarius moon so I guess I need to keep this in in, in mind for her because that means she's kind of like a hidden Sagittarius but I don't have any real full-blown Sagittarius in my life that I can literally shake hands with like they're far away from me or I only communicate through text with them but if I did have a Sagittarius that I worked with on a regular basis, like if I was in love or dating them, then I would really allow them, I would really want them to express themselves this month and all of next year forever. Like people don't get, and I don't, I hope you guys don't think I'm trying to baby you because I don't want to make you feel even more like down than what some of you already feel. But I just, I'm, a, a, I'm an extremely sensitive empath person. Like, I can feel energy through the computer. I can feel energy through my phone. I have dreams. Like, I literally understand. My 12th house is Sagittarius. My 11th house is Sagittarius. So my service to the, com to the world and to the community is Sagittarius ruled. My 12th house, spirituality, subconscious, it's Sagittarius in my birth chart. So I'd say that I'm pretty close to your guys' energy. I have Jupiter in Sag. I have Pluto in Sagittarius. So, you know, I have a lot of Sagittarius energy. And it makes me very, very sensitive to Sagittarius's. So I think a lot of you need to ground this expression. And you need to express this new you. I see a lot of you embodying this kind of earth sign energy. And that might be why some of you have been dealing with Capricorns and uh, Tauruses and Virgos. It's, it was only to show you how to kind of, it was like you were kind of, I don't want to say stealing their energy, but you were, you're studying it only for your, for, and I don't blame you. I'm not mad at you. You studied their energy and it was to get, it was to get you through that. If anything could get you through, I mean, come on now, Saturn is, is hot, is happy in Aquarius and Capricorn. Like it, Saturn rules Aquarius and Capricorn. So it's more of a logical intellectual energy by nature. It's not really a watery or a fire energy, you know. It doesn't do well with passion or, or emotion because it doesn't give a fuck. Emotion and passion, no, no, they don't know boundaries, right, Sag? Like, I can say that for both of us, that emotions and passion, they it flows on continuously. Saturn doesn't like that shit. Saturn's more about what comes around goes around. So you want to express everything that you've been through. All your new values, this new power that you have, see this wand in his hand? He has a wand and a coin. So you want to express this kind of new magical value that you found. I do see this as your guys' energy. You're more of a grounded face. Saturn grounded the fuck out of you guys. It showed you how sneaky and how how evil, how dark and, you know, it. Saturn, 
Saturn shows people the hard way why there should be boundaries in life. But the trick with Saturn is after he leaves you, you know, you don't want to look over your shoulder for the rest of your life. You want to just be that new military person. You want to be that new, you want to take the new lessons that you, he's like your dad. Saturn's everybody's dad, you know, and it's like, it's like a little girl who, whose dad is really hard on her, you know, no boys, you know, no, you better be in, you better come home at nine o'clock. And she thinks he's being the worst asshole, right? Like he's her worst enemy. But when she grows up and she's not pregnant, because her dad gave her a curfew and when she has good grades because her dad, you know, made her made her study every night. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to get at? You know what I'm trying to get at, Sag? Well, you want to express the new things that you've learned, okay? There's a lot of different ways I can interpret this and we are going to move on here. And what's going to happen is as I go on with the reading, I'm going to come back to this because Spirit's going to show me even more about what this might mean. But I do see you expressing yourself either to an earth sign or in an earth sign way or expressing what, what you've learned the last four years. I mean, you're really a different person, believe it or not. I know you guys probably feel pretty different. So you want to express that. You want to express this magically. So you want to ground your magic. You want to ground this. This is new value that Saturn taught you. Some of you might even value yourself more. Whereas you used to be this timid, shy person. Well, now you're just this strong forward speaking person like this grounded earth sign these are two very different energies they could almost date you know because she's shy and cute and and he he's the type that'll beat anybody up like if they go out on a date so this could be like two different parts of you or something or or maybe you're this character and you're dating a character like this maybe you know but i do think this is more so about expressing yourself and ground expressing everything that's new about you because i see you holding a brand new coin like i guess for some of you this could be the expression of finances and and things like that you may need to express yourself to a boss or, or something but we'll come back to that i just believe that that's you need to express yourself you need to express the newfound value because there's a lot of changes going on here this is the ending of a chapter and you're not the same person as you used to be. So you want to express yourself to those who deserve it. Not just any old body. Because not everybody cares, right? But I'm sure Saturn taught you that too. So let's move on here to patience. We have patience coming up. Patience. I think Saturn teaches people patience. Because it teaches people that you can't always have what you want. You have to work for what you want. Like, there is no choice but to be patient when it comes to Saturn. And that's because Saturn is all about restrictions. So I think for the past four years, you guys have been experiencing restrictions and rules and regulations and authority in different areas. So this is a very humbled figure. She's humble. She is literally surrendered. She's like bowing down and just being patient for whatever it is. So I feel like in the beginning of December, like the first week, I mean, come on now. I know that if I was a Sagittarius, first week of December, I would have been like, oh my God, can this just end? Please, universe. I know I can feel that Saturn's about to leave my sign. Please, just we want to push the fast forward button so much, right? But guess again, Sagittarius, this is right before Mercury first went retrograde on the third. This is like the second. We This is like the second. Okay, but time is fluid, so this can be now, this can be later. But it, the way that I'm reading it, this is like the patience that it took for you to even go through a Mercury retrograde right now. Like, how dare spirit, no offense, to like, I'm just trying to express the fact that, come on now, a Mercury retrograde too? In Sagittarius, like, are you serious? Are you, are you, but you know, then we have to humble ourselves and we have to be patient and we have to understand that this is teaching us a lesson and that we're gonna grow and that we're gonna be more wise afterwards, okay? Everything happens for a reason. And you really, really do wanna be patient all throughout the month of December because there's some really great messages here for you, Sag. I, I can't wait to talk to you in January to see what's going on in the new year, things like that. You know, so you do need to be patient, especially, you know, I know that it's the middle of the month now, but I do hope that you guys tapped into some type of patient energy because I know, I know, I know that you guys are really at, like your patience is thin right now because you have been through it 
And I know, I know you can do it. And I'm not trying to doubt you or sympathize with you. But I also want you to know that I know that you guys are, you know, I wouldn't say that you're impatient, but it's like, what more could you ask for, universe? Like, what, you know, Sag is really being looked at, right? This is a rather hard time for you guys. But patience is the way through it, okay? Patience and understanding. So we do have patience. And it came out with a really, really important card. Because this is the judgment card. The judgment card is... Not only is there an archangel there above, you see that angel kind of playing that trumpet? Well, he's playing the trumpet of truth. And that trumpet of truth is waking, waking up these people from their graves. So a lot of people interpret this as a, as a second chance card. It's, it's these people who are getting a second chance at life. So you want to have the patience. Because when this, when this angel plays this trumpet of truth, when Saturn moves out of your sign... You're going to have a second chance at a brand new life. This is what Saturn is, has been in your sign for, so that you could feel this, this rebirth happening. You know, this is a second chance. This could be a second chance at patience, but I do know that you need to be patient because this, this angel knows exactly when to play this trumpet. He's not going to play it too early. He's not going to play it too late. He's going to play it when his, when his div divinity tells him to. These people cannot be woken up a second earlier or a second later than what they're supposed to. This is all written in the universe. So I do believe that this is, you know, it's really, really important. And it's divine right now for you guys to remain patient because there is definitely some changes happening. You guys are very much being awakened to the truth. You know, we did have a Gemini full moon in your seventh house. So this, you know, Gemini has everything to do with, with the truth. So on the 3rd, and this is coming up in the, the first week. So in the first week of December, we did have Gemini energy playing that trumpet of truth. So this could have woke you up. This could have even woke up some of your guys' partners in the past. So this could be a second chance in a love opportunity or some type of relationship because we had Mercury retrograde the, the next day. And Mercury retrograde brings back exes. It brings back people from the past that we have unfinished business with. These people had unfinished business too. And this angel knew that. So he's playing the trumpet of truth for them to rise again. They thought everything was over. They, But they were patient. Think about how patient these people were when they were in their graves for years and years and centuries. But they had faith in this that this angel would play that trumpet again. And now it's their time to shine. Now they get this second chance at life. And I want you to remember that. Sagittarius because it's coming up in your reading and this is coming up in the beginning of December so December has a lot to do with judgment you know a lot of everything that you've done is going to be judged by the angels and by the universe and your patience is going to be judged too so if you guys remained patient throughout this Saturn transit you don't even know how much how rewarded you're going to be you don't even know I don't even know I don't even know the reward for patience in heaven but it seems like it's a really beautiful one so you want to be patient for that trumpet to sound. You want to be patient with the angels of the universe because they are there, Sagittarius, and they do hear you, okay? And you really want to make sure that you don't lose trust in, in certain situations. This came out upside down, and I'm still, like, super confused about that because I don't do reversed cards. But somewhere along the line, I must have... This card must have flipped over with the intent of the Sagittarius reading, and here it is, this trust card. Now, upright, trust means, you know, that you are trusting a situation. And this came out for the Cancer reading. And what I told Cancer is that this is their inner light. So this is your inner light too, Sagittarius. It's like a moon in his hand. So you, and this is interesting because it came out right here. And this is the first week of December. And, you know, this, this is like the third. So this is when the full moon and that Mercury retrograde happens. So it makes sense why patience would come up because when mercury goes retrograde everything slows down even though we can feel as higher beings all this is going to happen sometimes we're asked to slow down and wait especially by the judgment card sometimes we're you know mercury retrograde really does make it's like mental patience you know we have to have patience that's why people argue in mercury retrograde that's why people you know that's why exes come back because it's like they're just impatient because we're all psychic to a certain degree, and we can feel that there's something about to happen, but when it doesn't happen right when we want it to, we, like, get mad, you know what I mean? So 
upright this is trusting your inner light this is trusting the moon trusting your inner feelings but up you know come on now this means not trusting stuff this means losing trust in a situation so you know i don't even i get it sag i don't i don't blame you if i was a sagittarius i probably would lose trust in a, a few things too at this point this is around the third of the month when the moon was full in Gemini. And it's interesting that we had the trumpet of truth. So who knows? Some of you guys could have learned some pretty harsh truths. And it could have it could have made you lose trust in a situation. Because, you know, and then patience is coming up. It's like, come on now. Like, I've been waiting for this for so long. And it's not happening. So I have no, no choice but to just stop trusting that this person's ever going to come back. Or that this person's even there for me. But Sag, you want to express yourself. Express what you don't trust anymore. Express what you've lost patience in or what you're trying to be. And you don't have to express it to a person or a human. You can express it to the angels. It, it, honestly, actually, I, I, uh, I um, recommend that you do that. I recommend that you talk to angels right now because... You're on another level, dude. You have been on another level for years. You'll always be on another level. You're a Sagittarius. But I don't like to see that trust is upside down. Like, this can be a warning not to trust certain people. But you always want to make sure you're trusting in your inner light. You see how he's holding that kind of orb of light? You always want to trust your inner light because it's what's guiding you. You want to trust the moon. You want to trust these inner feelings that we that you have because it's your it's like your psychic ability to you know intuitively pick up on certain situations so you may have you may i don't i hope this doesn't mean that you're not trusting your inner light because you really want to do that around this time i hope that that your intuition told you not to trust a certain situation now you know that's the end of the first week and we do have that coming out with the strength card so you want to trust your strength sagittarius you are so strong like, I'm so proud of you for dealing with Saturn in your sign for the last four years. You're, it's time to celebrate. Okay? Make sure, I don't know if y'all celebrate Christmas or whatever, but you deserve a 40 ounce. <laughs> like, you deserve several bottles of wine, several joints, several blunts, several, I don't even know, some of y'all might do Molly or, I don't do those kind of drugs, but I, I say that because I was watching Cops last night and there was like a Molly episode. Oh my God. But anyway, you know, you guys do need to celebrate because you have unbelievable strength. Unbelievable. And, you know, this is also a Leo card. So this is a fixed fire sign. You are a mutable fire sign. Mutable means that you can change and adapt very quickly. And I know it might not seem that, that way sometimes, Sagittarius, but trust me, as a mutable sign, you handle change better than Aries and Leo. Now, since this is a fire energy... I am led to say that for some of you, the universe is asking you to trust that more stable part of you because Leo symbolizes fire in a very, it'd be like Scorpio for me. You know, if I do the Pisces reading tomorrow and the Scorpio card comes out for Pisces, I'm going to say the same thing to them. I'm going to say, hey guys, we're water signs and this is Scorpio, a fixed water sign. So we may need to stabilize our emotion or be more like a Scorpio. So there may be... This is the North Node too now. Leo is the North Node. And I believe that that's trining in the universe. That's a that's a positive aspect when something's trining. So this could be trining this whole, the new moon and all that. So this energy is pouring positive. So Leo could probably be sending you strength right now as your fire sisters and brothers. But you know, you guys, you have that lion in you as well. And you have that infinity angel, infinite angel in you as well. So these are two different parts of you that make you very, very strong. And you want to keep that in mind during situations that you lose trust and faith in. Because you, you need to trust your strength right now. And there could be a Leo for some of you that you don't trust anymore as well. Because it is coming up with the upside down trust. So some of y'all might have broken off with a Leo energy or something like that. But for the most part, I'm seeing that this is just trusting your strength. Some of you may have questioned, and I get it, Sag, because you can, you're very psychic, okay? You're very magical, so you can feel, like, it's like, I feel like the, okay, what I just saw in my head is someone in a race. 
and they're doing good and they're doing good it's like the hardest part of the race is always that last mile run the last mile stretch you don't want to give up or lose trust or or become weak in a situation when you only have like you're literally at the end Sagittarius December is the finish line please you made it through so much you already made it through the judgment card no no need to lose you know don't there's no sense in expressing yourself and being patient if you're just going to lose trust in your own strength so i hope that if this happened in the beginning of the month i hope that you know you find the strength and the trust again now you know follow your intuition if, if this is a situation that you don't feel like trusting anymore then you know after everything you've been through Sagittarius do what you want honey do what you guys want because you're free and I'm not gonna act like Saturn for you I am not gonna restrict you guys you can this I'm just here to help I'm just here to explain these energies a little bit more for you okay so I do see that some of you lost trust in a certain situation that had to do with either a Leo or your own personal strength now moving on here to a much more positive energy we have make a wish so come the middle of december and it is the 16th today so this is we're coming up this row here is about where we are right now now when we get to this row this is more so futuristic but like i said all these energies go together we're going to relate all these energies together and all these energies together so you know take the messages and apply them to your life you know trust your intuition make sure you are trusting i hope you're trusting me in this in this reading so some of you come the middle of December, or right around right now, right before your your new moon, maybe you gain a little bit more positive energy because you're, you're in a wishing state. This is a card that comes up when you literally need to make a wish. Some of you are just going to wish that after Saturn gets out of your sign, you're left the fuck alone. Like some of you might need to stay away from Capricorns, I want to say, because they are always Saturn. You know, if you don't like what you've been through for the last four years, then you might want to, you know, make sure, I don't know if some of you had friends of Capricorns or, and I'm only saying that because my friend, um, I have a Sagittarius friend and he is, he's been with a Capricorn. I don't know how they're doing or whatever. And I also have another friend that's a girl and I believe she's dealing with a Capricorn. So I do actually, I see Sagittarius and Capricorns together all the time, honestly. I really do. And it's because Capricorn is, uh, no, Sagittarius is the subconscious of Capricorn. So, you know, you're the 12th house of Capricorn. So you guys, you know, you kind of, kind of, it's the same way that Pisces get with Aries sometimes. It's because Pisces is the subconscious of Aries. And we all, we all, we all like our subconscious. It's what we think subconsciously. So we kind of identify with the sign that's right before us. So Sagittarius, you're right before Capricorn. Um, but anyways, you know, some of you found, you know, you're in a wishing kind of mood come the middle of, of December or maybe throughout December, you know, maybe you made a wish and you need to be patient for it. But I see this coming up in the middle of December very strongly. So, you know, if you need to wish on a star or see if you see 1111 and you make a wish or sometimes you can just close your eyes before bed or at any point in the day and just say universe. I wish for blank like I wish for peace I wish for money I wish for a love love situation and it's interesting that I say that because it did come out with the ace of cups very very beautiful energy things get better Sagittarius the ace of cups is all about emotional fulfillment it's about new love this is the new love card so some of you are making a wish after I feel that you left somebody or that you're gonna leave somebody and Leave it to Sagittarius to wish for a new love before they even leave the current one. <laughs> like, I'm like that too. And the only reason I say that is because we have this new love and this wish before I see that you're you're accepting a situation and leaving it. So, you know, some of you are wishing for emotional healing or like some type of spiritual healing because the Ace of Cups, it heals everything. This is like, like nothing, nothing can not be healed by the ace of, like this is going to heal anything emotional wounds mental wounds physical wounds spiritual wounds you name it just stand underneath this ace of cups better yet take a drink from this ace of cups and you know all of your chakras will be healed purity will fly and you know it'll be great so some of you are making a wish that has to do with this kind of new beginning of and this is a new emotional beginning so 
I do feel that some of your guys' emotions have really taken a toll, possibly because of Saturn, possibly because of your solar return, possibly because of, I don't know, Jupiter being in your 12th house. Because the beginning of the month, you did start off as a rather cold, emotional figure. This is not an emotional figure. This is more so a logically ground, details-only figure. So by the middle of the month, you guys could really be wanting a new beginning in emotions. But I do see for a lot of you that this is a wish for an emotional lover. Like, you guys just want to manifest and make a wish um, for uh, someone new to come in your life that you have an emotional connection with, that you have a passionate and an emotional connection with. So that's really beautiful to see. It's coming up underneath expression. So some of you need to actually express in the beginning of December or all throughout December that you have this wish. And you can express it to the universe. You don't have to express it to anyone else. But I do see here, the cards are showing me, Spirit showing me that there is some emotional turmoil and you're definitely wishing for a new emotional situation. And that has everything to do with love, everything to do with like relationships. And we do have seventh house energy, right? So, you know, there's new beginnings happening for you with this new moon in your sign. And this is the week where the new moon's gonna happen. That Sagittarius stellium is gonna happen. Saturn is gonna uh, move to Capricorn around here. And then it's gonna be Capricorn season. And then at the, the end of the month, you're so you like so like kind of exhausted a little bit and on guard, um, but we'll get to that in just a minute. This is more so how the month's gonna end and how January is gonna start. So let's move to the middle of your reading. This is this is what your reading is centered around. Like this is you, Sagittarius. Um, this is a very important spot in your reading because everything is kind of surrounding this energy. So this is a month of acceptance for you. It's very important that you accept everything about December, everything about 2017, everything about the last four years with Saturn in your sign, because this is coming up when this is like when Saturn moves from your sign and when when that new moon and, you know, the winter solstice, all those really like intense energies. I've always said that the key to life is acceptance, and that's exactly what this card is talking about. The key to life is acceptance. And what do you know? It's coming up in the middle of the reading and there's a big full moon right, be right behind her. So this is directly talking about the full moon in Gemini and the new moon. And I, I think more so the new moon um, because of where it's at in the reading and because of the new moon being in Sagittarius. And that's like days away. So I believe the middle of December, it's best if you accept things, accept what's what's gone except what comes except the challenges that you've any failures any challenges any uh, su successes like come on now it's just about accepting new beginnings and completions accepting your feelings accepting the inner you accepting it you know and you have to have patience before you can accept something so there's also something here about accepting the truth and accepting this kind of second chance, okay? I'm telling you, if you accept your life and if you accept everything, it's like so enlightening because so so often we try to change everything. We try to like fix things, but that only comes when we're not accepting the way that things are. So there's a lot here with acceptance. And another thing I want to mention here is that this is a right around the time. I would say Mercury goes back direct around this part of the reading and this part of the reading because it goes back direct on the 22nd so what i'm seeing here you see these flowers in her hair they look kind of like bubbles it looks a little bit like water if you look at it but nonetheless her head is being like it's being um what do they call that intensified or highlighted right so in this reading, I mean, in this card, I often get drawn to the flowers in her hair. Now, that's the head chakra, the, 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 what was I trying to say? Not her third eye chakra, but it's her mind. You know what I mean? Like that, oh, her crown chakra. There we go. Her crown chakra. So your crown chakra may be enlightened. You know, you're, this is you. This is the center of your reading. And, you know, I'm seeing you here as very being mentally enlightened. So Mercury 
going retrograde in your sign while all this is going on was extremely mentally enlightening for you. I believe every Mercury retrograde is, me is mentally enlightening. So I see that your crown chakra is growing and these flowers are white. So that shows me that there's pure thought going on. And, and I see that because in order to accept something, we have to kind of think in a pure way. We have to, you know, accept our... So this is accepting your thoughts and, and your feelings. Mercury is probably going to teach you that. But it does come out with the Six of Swords. And the Six of Swords is a rather... Mm, this card comes up when you're leaving a rough situation and you're entering a calmer situation. So let's put the acceptance card down because we know that you're accepting this. I just want you to get a better look at this Six of Swords. So we see here this uh, rougher energy down here. It's rocky and we see his staff there kind of pushing himself away. He's on this boat, right? And it's so interesting. I've been talking to the signs about the karmic boat that's going to show up when Saturn comes into uh, Capricorn. Because, you know, Capricorn rules Saturn. And I believe that this boat, this kind of karmic boat that we're all on, well, we're not all on it. The point is, after the 19th, everybody that's on your boat, metaphorically, those are the people that need to be in your life. But the people who aren't on your boat, see you later. You didn't make it. You didn't make the cut. Saturn didn't think you should. And especially for you, Saturn, Sagittarius, I almost called you saturn -terius. <laughs> Especially for you, Sagittarius. Um, you know, Saturn was has been in your sign for, for four years. So when, when Saturn shifts out of your sign, you know, you have to understand that everything in your life at that point is like karmically set up. Saturn is the lord of karma. So he's definitely going to take care of you. I know he's been kind of mean to you guys, but... You know, one of the positive things about Saturn is that he's going to basically give your life to you on a platter. You know, he's going to be like, okay, Sagittarius, I'm going to, you know, because dads are very protecting. People want to see Saturn as this mean old military dad, but, you know, dads secretly care about their children. And, you know, he's going to be a little worried about leaving you guys, Saturn is. You know, because he's going to want to make sure, he, tr he's, he's, he doesn't like to do hard work on a person and then it... It amount to nothing you know no dad would like to see their child grow up to be what we'll call a failure so you know just know that after the 19th that your life everything that every wherever you're at in life after the 19th you got yourself there through karma so that's good and bad so going back to the six of swords here you know there's an acceptance there's something that this is a leaving energy you know this is you leaving behind this is you leaving behind everything that Saturn caused. You know, Saturn does cause shakeups. He caused rip he caused ripples in your emotions. And that's what we're seeing here at the bottom of the card that these waters are really rocky. And this is another air energy with all these swords. So this is mental. So you might make the mental decision to leave something behind that it was causing you emotional problems. You know, and here you are as this masculine figure again. I see men and women Sagittarius's, you know, they're just going to be a lot more masculine than what they were before because, you know, this is said to be a woman in the boat and she's covered herself up. And at the beginning of the reading, we had the death of the, of the Queen of uh, Pentacles. So there's something here with the death of the feminine side of you. So, you know, this is, you know, the feminine energy has everything to do with emotion and nurturing and even being psychic and impact. I'm not saying that those things are dead, but you're going to be using those things more so as the masculine energy. And for some reason, I just got, I just heard the angels say that Sagittarius, if there's, if you're the feminine in a twin flame relationship, you are going through a tremendous amount of pain. And the masculine energy that you're with is just like not paying any, like, I don't know. He's just not around because he's leaving. So, Sag, you guys are leaving a situation behind, and it's coming up right in the middle of your reading. And I wouldn't be too sad about this. This card does talk about leaving things behind with regret, you know. But you want to keep in mind your future. You want to keep in mind what it took to get you there, right? You, you don't want to, you know, be depressed about the mental decision that you had to make. Like, you just want to keep in mind that in the future, you can see here in the distance, where they're headed is a lot... It's a lot calmer than than down here. Okay, so you wanna you don't wanna be in a place that feels like this. Trust me, I'm a water sign. Water is like this. 
it, it really does cause chaos in the emotional world. I like these waters way better. It's really still, I'd love to ride a boat over this water because it's really still. And land is very, very close. So this is you really doing that last mile stretch, okay, to get on land. You know, you've been in an emotional spot. You've been in an emo mentally emotional. So you're in your mind, there's been a lot of emotions. This water here represents emotion. So there's a lake of emotion that you're getting yourself across. You may even be taking a few people with you. These are, this is your karmic boat. So these are the people that are your friends and family members and loved ones, maybe a partner. Um, so you don't have to go alone, but you may be leaving, a, leaving behind a lot more than what you think you're going to. But don't worry, there's a whole world to explore once, you, once your boat docks over here, okay? So just keep your eye on the prize. And make sure you're coming from a place of acceptance. You know, you're going to have to accept whether this is someone leaving you or you leaving another person. Like, this is definitely leaving. You know, this bow is like, he, none of them are looking at us. They're all turned, their backs are turned. So, you know, you could be turning your back on a situation and making the mental decision to leave in December. I don't blame you, Sag, because at this point, anybody who doesn't fit the bill just, you know, you've been through too much to go through anymore. So let's move on and see what happens after you leave this situation. Well, it's going to be extremely important that you have a physical outlet. Um, okay, because after we've been through so much internally, it's very important that we find some type of physical, real way, which is why this is coming up. This is, this is you finding a way to express yourself in a very physically real way, right? This is at the beginning of your reading. So I told you that it would make more sense as we went on because now we have the need in the middle of December and throughout December to have a physical outlet. You guys are very energetic. Sagittarius has a lot of energy. So I know a lot of Sagittariuses that are like wrestlers and boxers and dancers and writers and they just work a lot sometimes. So there's a need here to find some type of form of physical outlet. For me, tarot is my physical outlet. And I write in my diary a lot. So that's another physical outlet for me. I don't know what it what would be good for you, Sagittarius, but the exercise, exercise would be a very good physical outlet for all these emotions. So when you're physically doing these things, make sure that you're keeping in mind the pain and the emotion that you went through that, for this long, because that's the whole point of a physical outlet. Like there's a lot of emotion, there's a lot that you're going through here, and it would be really cool if you could find a physical outlet to release some of this energy so that you can relax a little bit after you've been through all this crap, okay? So there's a need there for some type of physical outlet. I am seeing dance for a lot of you, so some of you could be dancers, because that's what that lady's doing in the card, she's dancing. But we had physical outlet come out with the high priestess. So you're gonna need an, a physical outlet for your light. You're gonna need a physical outlet for your dark. You're gonna need a physical outlet for your spirituality. Because let me tell you, it's going to be hard to be a Sagittarius after 2017 to not be spiritual. Like, you've been through so much light and dark. You've seen so much behind the veil for the last few years that you're going to need a physical outlet <coughs> for that. You're going to really need to ex express your spirituality in the things that you've been through. Like, I would love if some Sagittariuses would come out about what it was like to have Saturn in your sign, you know, like you guys can be motivational speakers for, for Capricorn. Capricorn don't care. They ain't worried at all about Cap about Saturn coming into their sign. They were born with Saturn in their sign, like, you know what I mean, though? Like, they're just, it'd be kind of like, like, you're not afraid of Jupiter, are you, Sagittarius? I'm not afraid of Jupiter. I'm not afraid of Neptune. So why would Capricorn be afraid of their ruling planet, you know what I mean? But it's not as easily said when you're ruled by a different planet. So the high priestess, you know, there's going to be a physical outlet for, you know, this is, this is kind of, there might be a secret physical outlet that you find this month. It, it could be very strange, but it might work for you. And you're just going to need to trust that because it might have something to do with building up your strength. That might be why build your, that might be why strength is right above the physical outlet. So I'm seeing boxing for a lot of you and I'm seeing wrestling. I'm telling you, I keep seeing this punching bag in front of me. Like, <laughs> like you guys really do need to let out that energy. And, you know, this physical outlet is going to be a very spiritual one. So you're not only going to be letting out a bunch of energy, you're also going to be growing spiritually from it. So maybe some of you do read tarot or some of you might be astrologers or 
a physical spiritual outlet would be prayer church i you know you guys are the ninth house so you might think of church and religion differently than me i'm not a religious person i don't like to go to church i like to just do my own thing like the high priestess does but when it comes out with physical outlet you know you guys might need to visit a church and that's interesting that i say that because the underlying energy is these two people outside of the church um so some of you you know and it is christmas so some of y'all might you know christmas is like a religious like christian type of thing so some of you might be going to church come the middle of the month some of y'all might need to talk to the mother mary and just be i think was the mother mary under here no divine timing um some of you guys might need to just pray you know and have some type of spiritual i don't know let me know what works for you guys but there's a spiritual physical outlet come the second week now this is when mercury's direct kind of well mercury's really about to be direct um this is when sagittarius season is over this is when the winter solstice is over or it's around the time of the winter solstice especially because there's light and dark here and i think that every solstice and equinox is like a balance between light and dark um you do need a physical outlet for that light and dark as well you need a physical outlet for everything that you've been through the last four years um but this yeah keep in mind that this is the new moon right that might be why there's light and dark here in this in this card because the moon and the sun are going to be together in the sky and you might need a physical outlet especially because that's going to be a time where that stellium is in your house and you know that's going to be just like the straw it's not the straw that broke the camel's back it's like it's like the cherry on top of the sundae like you know you've been through everything and right before the month ends you know right i'm telling you saturn takes every minute with you he's gonna take every minute that he has with you he knew four years ago that this was gonna happen so he literally waits to the last second that saturn is in your sign to let up on you he doesn't quit a day early he doesn't let you have a few hours like it's like it's kind of like a gym coach that's making you run laps and you think that just because, you know, okay, so he's like, all right, dude, today we're running 15, 15 minutes straight. And I, that's even, that's too easy. Today we're running 30 minutes straight. So your gym, Saturn is your gym coach. And he said, today we're running, today we're going to work on stamina. And you're going to run for 30 minutes straight. No breath. You're not going to slow the tread. So this, he actually sets the treadmill speed to like extra fast. So, and if you fall, you run an extra five minutes. If you slow down or, or or anything weak like that, and it's interesting that strength is coming up, okay? Anything weak like that, he's gonna even he's gonna make the speed go faster. So you you know he literally meant thirty minutes. At twenty eight minutes, oh he ain't gonna let up. You don't get no break. Like you're gonna run for thirty minutes straight, not twenty nine, not twenty nine in thirty seconds, thirty minutes, sixty seconds, thirty time. Do you know what I mean by that? That's how harsh Saturn can be. And also running is a very, very nice physical outlet. So some of you might need to take a jog or or exercise or I don't know. There could be writers. I don't know. There's lots of different ways to, to physically express your spirituality or physically express, you know, this energy. And it's gonna be great. So yeah, this is this is right around that time in in what I was saying is that there's a new moon this day, and on the 18th, this is a couple days from now, guys. I hope my reading is up for you, because you're really going to need it. Um, it's really important that you're, you you create some type of physical outlet. But I think all of December, you need to do these things. Like, expression is something that is important for all of December, not just the first day. Physical outlet is something you're going to need all of December. And you really want to, um, maybe some of you are making a wish for a physical outlet as well. Somebody's physical outlet might be, you know, a loved one that they let cry on their shoulder or something. <sighs> okay, so let's go into the future, all right? And then we're going to talk about the underlying energies, and then that'll be your reading. So in the future, even though some of you might have experienced this already, this is, this is symbolic, though, for the last week. We do have time to create. So when you find a physical outlet, especially if it's art or if it's like some type of creative project, well, you know, it's going to be time to create. So when Saturn leaves your sign and when, you know, your birthdays are all over and all this Sagittarius energy and, and when you're left the hell alone, create something, 
A lot of you can write really beautiful songs about the energy you've experienced this year, this month, the last four years. You know, there's a there's an image, there's art, there's something beautiful that can come out of each and every one of you with if you utilize these energies that you've learned. You know, I know it. So it is time to create, and this can be in the form of art or music or writing or anything like that. You can create anything. Some of you might create a whole new life for yourself, but I do see that you're not creating alone. You know, the universe is saying, you know, Sagittarius, I was restrict restricting you for so long that now you can come out and about. This may be a creative work situation. But, you know, whatever it is, it's going to make you money because we have the Three of Pentacles with time to create. So you want to create something that is valuable to you. That So if you're an artist, you're going to create paintings, not just to look at, not to just to let sit in your studio, but you're going to create really beautiful images, Saturnian images, images that reflect and express your life. So if you're feeling, if you want to embody the sadness that you felt for the last four years or some of you have felt, then you might paint a very eerie painting of trees that is more darker, dark blues and grays and black colors. Someone's going to identify with that painting and pay you big money for it. So you want to create something with some, with other people that is potentially of value. So another thing about the Three of Pentacles is, of course, it's teamwork because we see these three people here and they have this contract and this could be Saturn too you know I'm tired of mentioning Saturn for you but Saturn is all about contracts and rules and stuff like that so I see that you're gonna get creative with that energy because you've worked with it for the past four years three and a half years whatever so you're gonna get creative with with contracts because these are people that come up to you after like oh my god I hope you guys handle this good that's why you need to let all this aggression out I believe that you need a physical outlet like the high priestess is she came out to tell you guys hey i've already traveled into to the middle of this month and i just want to let you know that you're going to need a physical outlet because at the end of the month you're going to feel like a lot of different ways and there's going to be people that that are saturnian ruled people who are earth signs or who want money they're going to come to you and they're going to remind you of saturn and then if you didn't let your energy out through some type of physical outlet you might bust them up like you might be like oh fuck no Saturn's out of my sign like I don't want shit to do with you that's just for some of you but the mo for the most part I see that you guys are going to be working together with other people and that someone might come to you with a creative idea at the end of the month and like here's the here's the scroll for it you know here's the contract that we want do we want the window to look like this Sag Sagittarius and you're like no problem I know everything about this. No problem. I got you. Let's all work together and create something beautiful. Right? So it is time to create. And it's time to create with other people at work. This is a work energy. This is a teamwork energy. This is an all together. We're all getting along. You know, so this might be something really cool here. Whereas the last four years, you may not have worked that well with other people. But it, it's coming up here as a really good thing. So if any of you experience some type of creative idea and then you let's say th this card is talking about a song that you're writing and then these people are someone who knows how to make beats and another person who knows how to um do music videos and then here's you with the vision right and you're like all right let's all work together you see how i did that there so you know just apply it however you want but there's some type of energy like that you really do want to involve people in your ideas at the end of the month because you have a lot of ideas. They've been restricted for four years. Gosh darn. You know, like you haven't really been able to express your creation or your creative side in four years. So come on out last week of December. You'll be okay. This is when all, this is like homeward bound, you know. But this is the ending to a pretty harsh month. So there is some rather interesting energies here to explain. Now, the next card... For the last week of December, there is a need to protect yourself from something energetically, Sagittarius. This card comes up when the angels are asking you to protect yourself. Do you see how this lady, or this angel, I should say, is protecting herself with light? Well, Sag, I believe that you need to harness the light that you have left and protect yourself from something that could pretend... I, I don't know what this is here, but you just want to be careful, okay? And this, uh, this card is coming up with the Nine of Swords. So I think this is more so protecting yourself from harm, like mental anxiety. 
in psychic attacks, okay? I believe, I don't know why, I don't even know what to call it, but there's certain entities that project psychic attacks onto people. I don't know what kind of being would want to psychically attack Sagittarius at the end of this month. That is literally the most evil thing I've ever felt. Because there's, maybe this is, maybe it doesn't have to get that deep, all right? Maybe this is just the mental anxiety that you feel after everything is over with. Like, you know how after we go through a traumatic experience that we kind of experience like a, a PTSD, you know, like certain memories. So you might have certain nightmares certain mental fears that come out at the end of this month just because you're afraid it's not over or you're afraid that this energy is is still going to be a part of your life. So you do want to make sure that you're shielding yourself with light against darkness and against your own mental anxiety or other people's mental anxiety because you just don't need it right now. Maybe in February, you know, maybe when the energies change a little bit, maybe when you've had a good four or five months because it's going to take a while for you guys not to feel the, the, the shadow of, of Capricorn. Like, you're going to be like, oh, no, does Saturn go retrograde? Is it ever going to retrograde back into my sign? Like, you, Saturn is going to move farther and farther away from you as it gets, it's going to move into Capricorn. I think it does move back retrograde a little bit, but it eventually will go into Aquarius. And then, you know, it's going to get farther. You guys have done. Be lucky. Be lucky that Saturn isn't moving towards you and that it's moving farther away from you. You know, hit up a Scorpio. Scorpio had Saturn in their sign back in 2012, so they know a little bit about this energy. The enlightened ones do anyways. But, you know, there is a need here to protect yourself from any insomnia, from nightmares. This is you waking up in the middle of the night with mental anxiety, not being able to sleep, mental fears. Okay, but it's all in your head, Sag. This is all an illusion. I'm talking about everything. Me, I'm not really here. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just the universe projecting itself as a girl named Braylon on a uh, whatever night it is on a Saturday night I'm not I'm not actually real so neither is any of this pain and this is when Mercury goes back direct so there might be certain fears that come back up from the past but let's just focus on this card this is the angels shielding you this is you shielding yourself and you are such a beautiful person you guys are very magical, so just make sure you're using that kind of magical ability to shield yourself from things that you you know are evil. That's why you're seeing here leaving those things behind, right? Because there's a you accept it. You you've accepted what it, everything. You've accepted life. You've accepted people's darkness. So you're not trying to change anybody anymore. You're just like, all right, dude, whatever. I have to leave you, I guess. Like whatever, I'll go. But you'll be you'll be sorry. Oh, wait a minute. I guess that was for some of you, but what I just noticed is I'm pretty sure that this card, I'm pretty sure that this is the card that was supposed to be with shielding. I'm pretty sure. I remember seeing that there was some, that there was leaving and leaving at some point, The so I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this card, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the, that little bit of a, but maybe those messages, everything happens for a reason. But, okay, let's go backwards a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. But everything happens for a reason. I don't ever make any mistakes. So that wasn't a mistake that something wanted me to talk about shielding yourself. I would have anyways. I would have anyways because it's right next to each other. But this is the Eight of Cups, okay? And there is a full moon here. So you want to think back to the full moon on the third. And you want to think back to the new moon. Um, you want to shield. This is coming up with shielding. So what this card talks about is leaving every, like, it's interesting because these are both leaving energies. You're In both of these cards, you are definitely leaving something behind, except for here, it's not, it's not with regret. Here, you know, it took you a while. You didn't really want to leave. You literally had to come to a place of acceptance to leave here. And this is in the middle of your reading. But here, this card doesn't strike me as, like, this guy, he ain't sad. He is going on a spiritual journey. He's leaving behind all this materialistic shit. You know, nothing that he wants can be found in a gold cup anymore. It has to be found in the mountains, kind of like a, a spiritual monk or something. So it makes sense at the end of this month that you guys are really like ready to chuck up the deuces and be like, look, I got to go on a spiritual journey. So some of you are just really taking a vacation. I told you that some of you are going to leave for a little while. 
and it's only for your own good. It's so that you can get a peace of mind, right? It's so that you can spend time in your spiritual solitude so that you can regap. Like this is four years in the making. This is a lot of energy that you've dealt with over the last year, four years, whatever. So I don't blame you for leaving. And it may have something to do with completions and new beginnings. This is like a new spiritual journey in the ending to certain materialistic ways. Like you don't care about money anymore, not as much as you did, not a, not cars or houses. You're like, fuck this. I want spirituality. I want my truth. I want my, I want to walk my purpose. And my purpose doesn't have anything to do with money or materialistic value. I'm a person of spiritual integrity. So you may leave something materialistic behind at the end of the month. And Saturn could have even taught you that. But it is coming up with shielding. So, you know, that's an interesting energy. It, it made more sense with the Nine of Swords, honestly. But the Nine of Swords is coming out with you already know. So I literally talked to you about something that you already knew, knew but that's okay. So I do see you walking away. And I guess maybe you should just walk away and protect yourself at the same time. Because it's coming up with shielding and you may need to shield yourself. So that's very interesting, Sag. And then we have, at the end of December, we're ending December with mental anxiety that you're already aware of. I'm sorry that I talked your ear off about that. I didn't know. But you do. So, you know, you don't want to second... At the end of this month, Sagittarius, don't you dare second guess your intuition. Don't you dare... And this is coming up with, it's in the same row as trust reversed. So I hope that you regain that strength quickly by the middle of December because you're going to need it down here when it comes to already knowing things that your inner light was trying to tell you. You're going to need the strength. This girl, this angel, she's walking next to her emotions. She's like around this water, so she's very emotional. And she's contemplating on something that she already knows. Now, this could have something to do with that two of swords that popped out in the beginning or that two of wands. Because there is certain decisions that you need to make this month, but you already know that. And this is so Sagittarius. Like, if I had Saturn in my sign for the past four years, there'd be shit that I already knew too. Out of fear of getting like an extra mile on the treadmill or something or some punishment from Saturn is what I'm trying to say. So we end the month... We end the year with something that you already know, Sagittarius. It's something that you already know. The angels are whispering it to you. There's a lot here with already knowing because the high priestess already knows too. So you do, you already know. And this, something that you already know could be keeping you up at night. It could be causing you mental anxiety, you know, or or nightmares. So, you know, you want to be careful there because you, you've been through a lot. And you don't want to like mentally exhaust yourself with things that you already know you know you didn't create teamwork and you didn't make this wish and accept all this shit and express yourself and you know you didn't you didn't you don't want to waste your patience on this at the end of the month so you know if you already know this nine of swords energy if you know who's causing this or what's causing this then you know what you have to do you know you're gonna have to leave that behind this month and i think you already know that so let's tie in some of these underlying energies. So we have an underlying energy for these cards as relax and release. So, you know, you do want to release the expression. You want to relax and be patient this month. You want to release untrustworthy people, places, and things. You want to relax and make a wish and release it into the universe. You want to accept the fact that you need to relax and you need to accept what the universe is going to release out of your life. You want to relax. It's going to be very relaxing for you to have a physical outlet. It's also going to allow you to release a lot of that energy. You know, creating something in, in the form of a team, team membership, it's going to release a lot of things too. Create, creating, being creative is a very releasing and relaxing way to deal with things okay so this it might you guys might create a physical outlet for yourself that is very creative you know you don't want to shield yourself too much from re releasing or relaxing either okay and you already know that you need to release and relax you know what you need to release you know what you need to relax so in order to relax you need to release something in order to release you need to relax see how that kind of 
you know, jumps off of each other. And then we have the Archangel Metatron, okay? So this is an Archangel here for you to help you on your new spiritual journey. Archangel Metatron literally helps people on a new spiritual journey. So he's here for you to pray to if you need help. Now, this, oh, I can't forget that I'm pulling an extra card for you too, but I'm going to clean everything up. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave the cards so that I can give you a... But we do have... You may need to release a, a left out in the cold feeling. I do feel that this is very Saturnian. I'm sorry to feel like a broken record, but a lot of Saturn is in your reading. And, you know, for the past four years, in 2007 and in 2017 and in December, you there could have been a lot of times where you felt left out in the cold, Sagittarius. For some of you, you even feel borderline poor or unemployed or like not a lot of money so this is like financial struggles but I just want you to know that there's always sanctuary there's always light right and this we are I live in Michigan where it's very cold and it is actually snowing here so you know some of you just feel left out in the cold because you're it's winter and you don't have anyone or something like that um, but you know, you do want to value your beliefs. I do see this is my card for valuing your beliefs because it's the the pinnacles are are on the window of the church. So it's like you want to value the place of sanctuary because what a lot of people say about this card is that these people are very wounded, and this is you after Saturn has beat the fuck out of you guys, right? Like you are your legs are broken, your clothes are torn and tattered. You're cold. Come on. Like this. Oh, I just want to like heal you guys. I just want to like hug you guys. You know, so you're walking in this church has given you a place to rest and heal. So I don't know what this church is going to be for you guys, but just know that there is sanctuary that is available to you. As long as you value your own personal beliefs in Sagittarius, you are, you know, the house of beliefs. I just opened up to the Knight of Swords. So, you know, there's a lot charging for this is you know this energy is very very hostile but there is light at the end of the day okay this is an underlying energy so it has a lot to do with the cards that are already on the table so you could be leaving this feeling behind I hope so this is could be what's causing you mental anxiety you know but I believe this could be why you lost trust in a situation but you also need to apply patience to this because if you're patient, you know, you have somewhere that this church is something for you. This church is symbolic for for someone that takes you in and revives you. Okay, because you are pretty fucking wounded. Okay, these people are really down and out. But it's okay, Sag. Now remember that this card has a lot to do with the devil card. Okay, so I'm not going to talk too much about this. Here's the Ten of Pentacles. So this is completing, thank God, in a very, very real way. Um, this is a Capricorn for some of you. This is a completion happening with some type of Capricorn energy. So you may have Capricorn energy. You may be dating a Capricorn. Your mom might be a Capricorn. I don't know. But the truth is going to come out rather quickly about this Capricorn or about what has been chaining you through to it. This is you being chained to Saturn because this is, this is Capricorn and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Um, this could be a, a left out in the cold feeling. Ooh. Virgo. Okay, so you may need to isolate yourself or or it might have something to do with a Virgo too, but this is a lot of earth. This is a mutable earth and cardinal earth. So right in the middle should be Taurus. So there's a there's some type of energy that's missing. Um you know, Taurus is missing from this reading. So I don't know what that means to some of you, but you need there's no there's no fixed energy. Um very interesting that Virgo would come out though. Okay, but these chains are going to lift from you guys. Come Capricorn season, don't be too afraid of this devil. You know, it only exists in your subconscious. These are your subconscious fears. You're not controlled anymore. You can release these chains. You can go back to being the lover's card. This is the lover's card gone wrong. So I don't know if this was a karmic relationship that was causing you to feel left out in the cold or whatever. <clears throat> but, you know, you need to break those chains. And I believe that you need to release the left out in the cold feeling and you need to relax your subconscious because okay in your subconscious you guys could have been feeling chained and hopeless and left out in the cold i do believe that that's a message for some of you as well and i just want you to know that all of this happened because of divine timing we have divine timing 
um, happening after you release and you relax, okay? Release and relax, and then that leaves divine timing at the bottom of your deck. So, you know, divine timing reminds me of Sagittarius energy because you guys are very divine. And I'm not really sure why it reminds me of Sagittarius energy, but as a, uh, oh, wow, that was kind of quick. So you guys are going to get a, a couple of them. I'm not going to use this card because I didn't even get to talk to my cards, but the fledgling is coming out. So the dark wants you to, this is, um, the point of me using these cards for you is because, you know, there's only so much that angel cards can tell you. There's only so much that traditional tarot can tell you. And as a birthday present and as my way of thanking you for viewing my videos the, the most last month, I did want to pull a card for you that would reveal a secret to you. So the first secret is that there's a new beginning hidden in all of this. The fledgling is a lot like the fool card in regular tarot if you're aware, if you're um, you know familiar with that. The fledgling is a number one. You see that number one up there? So this is the new a new journey. This is a new beginning, and the dark is revealing that to you. And isn't that beautiful? So this this is certain hidden aspects this month, certain information that you didn't know this whole time. So this is kind of like an additional underlying energy. So you had to be patient for this new beginning, you know. You already knew that this was coming. You had to have trust in this new beginning. You want to express this new beginning. Make a wish for this new beginning. Accept this new beginning. Create a physical outlet for this new beginning, you know. So, Spirit, what is hidden from Sagittarius? Let's reveal something light that's in the dark for Sagittarius. One card, please, as a gift to them and as a happy birthday. What is it that we can reveal to Sagittarius this month in December? Let's reveal something hidden deep, deep, deep in the ethers. Something that they couldn't see in December and perhaps all year. Okay. Lust. Okay, there is a, there's a deep lust involved in this situation. Now, I just believe that this is a partner for some of you and that this is the passion, okay? There is a 24 up here. So 4 plus 2 is 6. So there's some, there's a, like a lust for life that's coming back for you. And, you know, I don't know if some of you guys know who Lana Del Rey is, but she has, a, has an album called Lust for Life, and she's a Gemini. Um, that's your opposite energy. So that's powerful. That's powerful. There, the lust for life is going to return. This is what's hidden from you, Sag. This whole time, lust has been hidden from you. So, you know, the house of night, the hidden energy wanted to explain to you and it wanted to show you that there's some lustful energy behind all this. And I don't see this as a bad thing. I see this as the lust for life returning because the sixth house, four plus two, is all about lifestyle. So I, I believe passion because lust is another word for passion. And this is sexual. OK, so you guys might actually be having a lot of sex. It might be, you, yeah, that might be your physical outlet. <laughs> some of you could be having some spiritual, tantric, I don't know. Some of you guys need to, oh, for lack of a better term, fuck it out. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but, you know, Sag is, is, that's, that's a Sagittarius secret right there. And that's what I asked for is a secret for you guys. So make sure that you're keeping this lust card in mind and that you're going to be really experiencing some passion here at the end of this year and then underneath that we have beauty so there's some hidden beauty and hidden fulfillment and hidden lust in your guys's life so let's let's show me again hey all right guys so that's a lot huh yeah well i hope it helped <laughs> And I'm so proud of you all. I'm so sorry that the video is so long, but there's a lot of messages that I wanted to get out, and spirit takes as long as it needs to. Who guys? So, I hope that this reading was relatable. Um, if it was, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, give me a subscribe. Um, I can't really see. I, oh, I, I can see when you subscribe. So, yeah, I'll, by all means, please subscribe, but also please comment. Please let me know your favorite part of this reading or what you didn't like or, you know, anything like that, Sagittarius. And once again, thank you so much for liking my videos. You had the most views, I believe, and Capricorn had the most likes. So they'll be getting some messages from the dark as well. And I think that was really helpful because it allows a different perspective. So, Sagittarius, I'm sending you so much energy.
Um, I can't wait. I can't wait until this energy is behind us. My heart goes out to you guys who are struggling a little bit more. But just keep in mind the messages that you received today from Spirit, okay? It's all going to work out. You just have to accept everything. It's all going to be okay. This was all for divine purpose and reasoning and timing. It's all going to mean something. You have to trust me. It's all going to mean something. It made you stronger. It made you wiser. Sag. I love you guys. And have a great rest of December, regardless of all the... <sighs> I hope your year was great. And all right, guys. I love you. I'll talk to you next month or yet next year, whatever you want to call it. Bye.